this stream. Tonight we have Joe Verma talking about foreign affairs. And thank you so much, Joe, for uh, being here. Thank you, thank you. It's lovely to be here. Awesome. So, we have a uh, pretty great schedule tonight. Um, and how about we just do some introductions first? So, who are you? And what do you do? All right, my name is Jules Verme. I'm from Sweden. Um, Denmark. I, I'm on the board of Europa, so I'm a regular board member on the European level, and I mainly do foreign policy, really, uh, when it comes to politics. That's so cool. Um, I'm public affairs communications consultant um, and, and full time caretaker of two very angry cats. But otherwise, you know, <laughs> here I am doing politics. That's amazing. So. That's uh, that's really cool. Uh, what are your cat's names? Like uh, starting off with the really important stuff first. Yeah, and, and really outing me as a dork immediately. Okay, uh, the name is Ishtar and Shamash. I'm I'm into old mythology, so Ishtar is the god of cats. So awesome. Cheating. Nice. That's really cool. And um, um, has she he granted she, you with she. some with some divine presence already? Uh, not yet, but I expect her to try to stream Crash in a moment. She's looking from across somewhere oh, there. Cool. Nice. Uh, confused, confused about why I, I've set up by the flag. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's her flag, by the way, isn't it? Mm. All right, that's so cool. Uh, so, yeah, everyone, tonight um, we are talking with Joel Boma. Uh, sorry if I mispronounce your uh, name. Oh, that, that's perfect. That's absolutely great. Don't worry. Yeah. And uh, uh, we are going to talk about foreign affairs. So, in a nutshell, can you talk about what that uh, would imply for Volt, like uh, as a high over kind of way? Well, you know, it's it's, it's ra really rather simple. the The European Union is is almost thirty countries, and all these countries today run more or less their own foreign presses. Uh, and whenever we coordinate, it's more or less by happenstance than anything else. And yeah, sure, there's the European External Action Service, which is the really dry and boring EU bureaucratic way of saying an EU foreign ministry. Sure. But it really doesn't have any teeth. Um, yeah. the, it, it, it's really simple. The European Union is, squeezed, is the largest market on planet Earth, if it's yeah, united. Definitely. There is an immense soft power. <laughs> there's an immense power in the European Union, but we have divided that up in 30-odd equal pieces right yeah 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 if you add, if you, add the, uh, uh, you know it's 30 plus if you add, add the countries around the european union right so it, it, it is really simple you have the united states on the one side and china on the other india is humongous and so on and so forth the european union if it doesn't have a united foreign policy run out of brussels is just going to be you know subject to division and it's, go it's going to be bullied around by by large foreign superpowers and we shouldn't have that. It's, it's in the interest of nobody. And one of the key reasons that you can usually get people involved, I think, and especially up in Sweden where federalism is such a, you know, such a small concept, yeah. making this argument actually works to people. It's, you know, it, because it's so simple. We're almost 30 countries. We have, united, we have common united interests on the global level almost all the time. The problem is you have individual people who want a strong man or who, who are too focused on national electorates or national bis, you know, business developments, such as in Germany, um, who can't on their own stand up to yeah. Russia or Nord Stream or Huawei on China. Yeah. And you see even Germany, even Germany, which, is, which with its enormous markets, can be pushed around by, by powers such as Russia and China. And while, yeah, China's huge, but Russia has the GDP of Spain. So, yeah. you know, it's... If not even Germany can handle the geopolitics of Russia, no other country will be stronger. But together we can actually make a difference and stand for European values for liberal democracy in a world where it's increasingly threatened. And we might actually have a shot at defending it. So, to, uh, that's thank you so much. This is a great introduction. So... Um... If, if I can just slowly summarize uh, for myself and maybe also for the viewers, uh, what we're talking about right now is that we as the European Union should have a joint um, foreign policy and a uh, joint 
strategy in dealing with all the other superpowers in the world. Right? Yeah. So, um, of course, every country right now has their own foreign policy, whether that being to other European countries um, or uh, to China, Russia and countries like that. Um, but ultimately, if we do not get one joint European foreign policy and a foreign strategy, a grand strategy, if you will, uh, we will fall. So united we stand. Is that how I can summarize it? Yes. Very That's dorky. Exactly. That's exactly the point. Awesome. And um, let's see. What would that like? I have my own idea. So uh, just a quick update. Uh, we have Robin in the background here and me, and we both studied international relations and international affairs. So we are uh, personally very, um, very enthusiastic about having Joel here. And we're going to try and give Joel most of the word. I don't think that that's going to be much of a problem. At the same time, this is very, this is a very passionate thing. Um, so please bear with us if we, uh, go into a rant about something uh it's it's about passion on that this is a passion project <laughs> um what would you say uh that europe might be one of the um uh, uh, at this point the only liberal uh ha ha ooh, that word a liberal bastion in the world is that something that we would like to try and spread or what try and uh, it's and compass. it's it's a it's a question that has to be kind of answered in a in a politician's way right yes do we want more liberal democracy yeah obviously we love liberal democracy we love the values that are the found that lay the foundations for the peace project that the european union is right without liberal democracy and everything that that means we would not have the european union as we have it today at the same time it's a lot i, I it's you know for example when we deal with china we need to be honest in our prospects of just exporting democracy. There's another large state that's tried to export democracy a lot of times and it hasn't really worked. <laughs> and uh, I think we should absolutely encourage and we should absolutely stand for liberal classic democracy in the European sense on the global scale. But a way to do that is most often to make sure that whatever we do on an international level allows us to stay true to those values ourselves not necessarily force others to do it. Would I love for China to be a liberal democracy like Europe? Of course. Would I love for Russia to be a liberal democracy like the European Union? Yeah, absolutely. But our chances to push them are usually found in the details where we refuse to budge on our end, because yeah. that forces adaptation, right? Let's take the deal with China, for example. I know we're going to get into that later, but the the reason that i think that the trade deal that the european union currently has drafted with china that's you know going to be approved in a couple of months yeah is bad is not necessarily because it doesn't make china a democracy we won't be able to make them budge you know that's just not how it works yeah. but it but we can still draw red lines we can still draw lines in the sand and say that we will not be complicit to and and we will not fund market markets that are of a certain minimum uh, that are not of a certain min minimum level of transparency democracy and you know human rights and and that forces adaptation so it's all about how you frame it would we want it on a global scale yes but there's only so many ways that you can do that and there are ways that you can do that but you need to be mindful of of the how fair enough yeah that makes perfect sense um Let's see how, how because that that is of course the the big issue here. Where is Civ three? Says and toast. Well, we are going to play Civ three in a bit. Uh, we're all set up and ready to go. Um, and Mr. Broho really asking genuinely the really important questions because I am tuning in and out of the multiplayer of the multiplayer screen, waiting for the game to show up. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, uh, actually, let's uh, let's start. Maybe we can get started definitely. Um, All right. I will need some uh, feedback from the audience here due to sound. Uh, I cannot hear my own sound. I have some issues with my computer being set up. I recently moved, and of course, your whole rig uh, screws up at that point. But hey, okay. what are we gonna do about it? Let's see. 
Um, I, mean, I hosted the game. Yeah. Feel free to check it out in multiplayer. Uh, I'm in. We will be four humans in total. Yep. And we'll play on a lovely world map, so you might recognize some continent shapes. Mind you, um, just as a, as a quick note, I, I thought uh, when I, when we discussed that we, what game we should play, I, I stupidly said, yeah, I've played Civilization 3, lovely. <laughs> I have not. I played Civilization 2 back in the day when that game was all the rage. And it was so beautiful. I my... Well, I mean, I'm going to get my ass handed to me, but you do you. So, you know, after, uh, before playing Civilization 3, the only thing I had played was Civilization uh Four, actually. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Same. Good old days. Oh, beautiful. Okay. So the real question is, who wants to play China? <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> I'll go for it. I'll go for China. I'll go for China. We'll absolutely go for China. I, I think we're okay. It's missing. Actually, uh, it's actually a point. really nice starting location. Okay. My um, goodness. I Mike, are you summer. joining? No, I cannot. I am having startup problems because. As you well know, um, funny tidbit, uh, do you know how um, old Civ uh, 3 is? Can I get some estimates without looking it up in the chat? <laughs> 22 years. I think you might, be, uh, you might be onto something. It might be something like that, yeah. Sweet is a real Civ 3 pro, by the way. He also ah, streams years, regularly. That is almost as old as uh, our own Teacher, Yo. what was the question again? <laughs> the question was, how old is Civ 3? Because it is a classic, and a good one at that. And I am in... Oh my goodness, it is working. Are you great? Well, and by the way, you make sure your audio is not too loud. Yeah, and you will want to, and you will want to click through the intro video as soon as possible because it'll spaz out if you, if yes. you wait for the phone. I figured that out. It's only twenty years old. Yeah, only twenty years old. You're off, sweet Sith three. I'm so, I'm sorry to hear that, but you will have to. Um, yeah, that's not good. Uh, at the same time, I am really not having the best of issues here. Yes, I am sorry for this sound. Um, going to change that in a bit this is well, always I mean, the problem with new with old I, games give me a second though no worries i think the I, I think late 90s were one of the best periods of gaming though i mean even also mm, single play age of wonders yeah. was published in 1999 uh, i love that game boulder's gate boulder's gate oh yes i do have player. to admit i um um I've been a passionate gamer my whole life, uh, but my real peak came in 2004 with World of Warcraft, and I am sorry for that. <laughs> Fair enough. Man, am I the only one who has not that much hardcore gamer? <laughs> I think um, I played the most games when I was like in early high school, but uh, and now I usually just play like old 90s games whenever I have the chance to be nostalgic. In the most place, I. The most uh, games I played was uh, when I was a kid. I was playing always that um, that game, Sly Raccoon, uh, Sly Raccoon, oh. and uh, Ratchet and Clank. That was Ooh. dope. Yeah, one of my first gaming memories is learning to play Baldur's Gate. Uh, all the Infinity Engine games were great. Uh, yeah. Black Isle has not sponsored. Black Isle has not sponsored me. Just saying, <laughs> but I'm in the mood I to get lost in Bioware. <laughs> Oh, also, um, okay. uh, uh, let's see, you, Mario, you in, Mike? just the Mario games, you know, also uh, just amazing, Mario 64, all those Nintendo games are amazing as well, let's not forget those. Mm. Oh my my, maybe next Super time, Civ 4, Super Smash Brothers, yes, Donkey Kong Country, which is like, oh, Metroid. Now we're talking, um, and on the topic of talking, uh, we are only talking. Um, we let's... are still only talking. Yes, there really is an issue with uh, everything going on right now. Nice to, uh, to, to join. Where is your problem, Mike? Um, I cannot open. Uh, the intro crashes the whole time. Like, normally you, it doesn't. You need to make it as soon as possible. Like, just 
aggressively spam click the mouse okay. as you start yeah, the game. Don't allow the intro. Yeah, yeah. yeah okay. don't the intro is a big video. mistake. Oh my goodness, it worked. Oh my god, it is amazing. Oh, yeah. All right. I've never watched the intro. Okay. I am the board member for I'm the board member for foreign policy, internal communications, and tech troubleshooting. Amazing. To, to Annie. To any Volters, uh, to any Volters that might be listening, I am not the board member for tech. Please do not ask me about tech. I disavow any any single thing about tech. Please do not go to me with tech issues. Unless it's playing Civilization Three, in which case you can go see Joel. But uh... right, exactly. Uh, if, 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 you have, if you have a problem with Civilization Three, hit me up on Workplace um, or on Twitter if you're not an Alter. But otherwise, you're on your own. Yes. All right, so, so let's see if this true. works now. So we will do this. Did okay. you fix the audio? I am. I have anymore? fixed the audio. Oh, oh, goodness. And now it doesn't see anything. Oh, no. I think the game is too <laughs> old to stream. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's beautiful. Oh, my goodness. Please tell, Please tell hmm? me you're joking. No, I am not joking here. It doesn't capture the game. All right, can someone tell, uh, can tell us <laughs> if uh, you know how to fix that? <laughs> if you've ever found that oh situation? Oh my god, this is sad. Um, oh my god. All right, worst case, you want to join uh, to uh, jump on to uh, Among Us game? Yeah. So let's see. We do have a real uh, Civ 3 pro here watching us, maybe, so yeah. we'll be able to help us out. Someone just text him in the, in the chat. Well, what's happening? But it's it's just a, another software window, so I wonder why OBS is not capturing it. Done. Let's see what's going on. Game capture. I'm I'm just going to fidget around with some. Uh... You know, you have about thirty seconds and 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 until I start dropping my expel. Oh, gifts. nice! On OBS, game capture doesn't work. Oh, great. I've tried a bunch of times and no luck. That's amazing. So the game's too old. All right, that's cool. Well, that's a shame. Use screen Use... capture. Okay, but that can be done. All right, All right. there we go. Screen capture. Well, Mike, you, you, you know, the, you, you have roughly five minutes before the chat gets angry, and then I expel you for populist points. Whoa. <laughs> what, what, what are you saying? Uh, populist well, points? I am... I yeah, am... Then... But when, the, when, the chat demo, when, when the chat so demands... I, I, thought we, I thought we were I thought we were against <laughs> doing that. Like that was the whole point of our party, right? Here, here I thought something about that we're going to discuss hawkish foreign policy. Mm. You right, know what, so Mike? A hawk. As, a, as a punition, Mike, you're going to be the one playing China. <laughs> fine, fine. I will be the one playing China. Here I, here I thought that I was going to get soft points by actually playing China. And so, so that any time and any time I get CCP trolls on Twitter, I can actually say, no, 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 don't worry. I love China. I played in Civilization 3. So... <laughs> to your point. <laughs> they will totally understand that. Mm. Yeah, that's what I'm going to say. I feel, say every man. time I argue for, the, for, 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 for Europe to recognize Taiwan as a state. Yeah, no, it's, it's not a problem. I played Chairman Mao <laughs> on Civilization 3. <laughs> let's see we have display two we have display one okay i am angry oh no toast why are you angry everything i do in my life is made to not make you angry i am so sorry uh we have here cancel guest list. as i told you toast, if you can get enough people behind it we throw mike out of the party next board meeting <sighs> again oh no poor mike <laughs> and here i'm just yeah, going full chinese now <laughs> nice one. He's feeling the game, man. He's feeling it. <laughs> All right. Fair game. enough. I'll give you that one. Sure. All right. I am just a poor peasant, you know. I uh, I'm just trying to make the best out of it, and uh, here I am, being uh, being bullied by chairman. Ooh, we see Civ. You just what? have to make it bigger. Yes. Beautiful. All right. So let's see uh, how we can do that. We have this one. Okay. So it it this is going to be amazing. Interesting. Yes. 
Well, you know, now, now everybody we, can finally see how I'm going to get my ass handed to me in a game that I thought I'd played. I think we only see half of Jewel's face now. Yes, that is indeed <laughs> the case. Which but... is way more than enough, it? but... Uh... And you can rearrange the order, right? Yeah, that's what I'm doing now. This is cool. really um, cool. a bit of... There we go. And my face as well, because I am so pretty. All right, let's see. Okay, we have the game capture going strong. We want to make it a bit bigger and screw everything up at the same time. That's amazing. Look at that. You we can't have do... another centimeter to draw it even bigger. Yes. We nice. can't because it is not a. Uh, it's not of the widescreen era yet. So we'll just have this one. Perfect. So fascinatingly, mine, my version is somehow adapting to the screen. As yeah. Yes, uh, mine, is, mine is properly square. <laughs> mine is properly yeah. square okay. too, but I think we're oh. ready to go. Um, people, I Get am in. genuinely sorry for all this inconvenience. I am going to rearrange the whole thing just a bit so people can actually can see what's tell going us on. if the sound is okay? It's going to be okay until we start the game, at which point, I no. don't know. Yeah, of course it will break down in a bit then, but that's okay. You know, it's uh, we do what we need to do. Oh, I fixed, uh, I muted, I muted the sound, and I think we're ready to go. All right. So. Okay. So we are still uh, in the lobby multiplayer. Yes. All right. Ready to go. And we have here. Look at the keyboard. What do we have? We have internet, local area <laughs> network, hot seat, and play by mail. Internet. Yes, internet, please. Internet, I can I'm do that. I'm not going to play by mail. Press on the on the little round. Yes, that is what I'm trying. Oh, yes, of course, it crashes then. Oh, come on. Oh, no, it doesn't. OK, so I am going to be uh, Magic Mike, of course. What else can I be? Oh, yeah, but yeah, for those who didn't figure it out, I'm Kassler. And there is right. a surprisingly hard amount of uh, only one game yes played. all right gandarf okay so i'm uh gandarf apparently which is also yeah, it just gives you, you it, it gives you your screen handle. the thing is it gives you your steam handle nice well, is your steam handle eu or board yeah i added it just for this <laughs> <laughs> okay. i mean i thought it was like your the, normal cha the chairman handle. the chairman role suits you well man <laughs> okay so <laughs> who's I am, I am proactively denying that I'm staging a coup next General Assembly with, uh, <laughs> with Masked Men in Green. I don't know the Masked Men in Green. There's no Masked Men in Green involved. Ooh. So you all can choose from the available um, civilizations. And if, and, if you see a, and, if you see a massive, and if you see a massive expense in the books that says uh, Black, you know, BlackRock mil private military contract, <laughs> that's not me. <laughs> I mean... You, we want to we make Europe uh, play play the game uh, as well as any other European super country or um, any other world uh, superpower, right? Exactly. Mm. Then I will play the uh, Argentinas, because don't cry for me, Argentina. So that's the Inca civilization I just renamed it. You're starting in South America then? Hmm. Um, another one was renamed the Arukai uh, are Canada, and the rest is just keeping its name, I think. Oh no, the Zulu are South Africa. Nice. Right. All right. China, Argentina. Robin, you want to choose this stuff too? Russia? Yeah. Okay. Um, hmm, I take what are we issue taking? with that because then I will take the Romans. Let's have at okay. least one European civilization. <laughs> that, that's fair. Yeah, I'll be the, uh, I... the militant assholes who stole everything. I do love the Romans, though. I have a very soft spot for that. Romans, cue, me, uh, uh, cue for, mu cue for mu music, Alicia with... Uh, Oriental or Incidental? With so we have accelerated production, domination victory, conquest victory, cultural victory. Uh, we have four computer... Uh, opponents that will be our enemies Ooh. and yeah let's have some fun uh, so most of our enemies are basically um, in America China uh, despotism. might yeah, take some time to get there 
I have a little bounty here. That's cool. Yeah, I gave us a little bit of starting boost. Nice. Okay, there we go. Um. Okay. Where? Uh, okay, 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 okay. Things are moving well. We have a worker. That's cool. How can you can you toggle between the ah the units? Okay, perfect. Yes. Did I did I make the point I, I clear something. that I have not played this game? Uh, well, I have in the kind of please try the game before streaming, but yes. it was but I have played Civilization Two, which is speaking of the topic of games so old they probably won't be recognized for stream. I mean, that oh, was the same with three, right? And it was beautiful. What do you say? We had the same with uh, 3 as well, but it we managed now. It, it doesn't look like the prettiest thing to do, but at the same time, uh, our uh, our pretty faces are in stream. We have foreign affairs as a bullet, and we can see the game actually being played at, without people's eardrums being exploded. So I think that we're set is to go. Mm. Yes. So, and on that matter, I think I want my settler to also go... Ah, you did boost everything a bit. That's nice. Right. <laughs> we have two settlers, so I don't... I, I'm not even only having Rome for like 300 years. Or how long did the Romans have their... Um, oh, we have Rome before they started conquering. I, I mean, I think that was after the Seven Kingdoms, right? I actually have no idea. I'm not very good in uh, history. Hmm. So, Mike, if I may give you a strategy recommendation, I would recommend to occupy the Bosporus. The Bosporus? Okay, 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 okay. Oh, right. right. Uh, yes. Okay, okay. I can do that. Okay, let's see. Um... Oh, and there is my cat. My cat is in extreme anxiety because of us having moved. And the moment oh, you do that, oh, little one. yeah, she is really not having the grace of time. She slept underneath the blankets the whole day because of the fact that she doesn't know where we are at. And he I... is here. She's called Glitter, by the way, in Dutch, Glitter. So not glitter, but glitter, which literally means the same thing. But I want to have that guttural G uh, next to it, of course, because, you know, why not? I can tell you a lot of reasons of why not. <laughs> well, it needs to be exotic, right? Yeah, fair <laughs> enough. And it's so hard. That's, uh, it, it cannot be glitter. Glitter is like everyone is like, can, can, can name their cat glitter. Exactly. Why not make it more, uh, more painful yeah. to hear? Like, I so know a little fun fact, I forgot. <laughs> I, I forgot which difficulty level the barbarians and the other AIs are, so um, good we luck are when meeting them. going to be in a rule of pain. Nice. That's good to hear. So, about that, Europe and uh, threat. Is that a thing, Joel? What do you think? Europe and threat. Uh, you'll yes. have to elaborate that question, I'm sorry. Um, well, I mean, there are, there are plenty of things going on here in the world, right? There is uh, the collapse of the international system uh, with the decline of uh, American soft power after so many different regimes. Um, yeah. Look, on the topic of that, let's yeah. put it like this. Um, Pax Americana, the idea that, you know, the American world order, the American world police order is not over. No, it's not going to be over no, for it's a really while. Not. It's not going to be over for a while, but... It is going to be over, right? It, yeah. it it it's in his latter half for sure. I think. I would concur. Yeah. I think that it started going south for the for Pax Americana around the time of W. Bush. Um, How so? We're, we're still seeing we're still seeing the utter chaos unfold. Um, that is, you know, the after effects of. Afghanistan and Iraq mm. and everything going on in the Middle East can obviously be found, you know, be, be, be tracked back to a while, let's just say. And uh, without endorsing war in the Middle East, let's just say his father was more competent at doing it. You know? Right. Yeah. So everything with 
Bush the Younger, kind of, I think, kind of pushed it over the edge for, for the US. And while Obama, I think, tried to restore some of the balance of it, there came a man after that. And in the same way, Biden is now going to, you know, I think Biden's going to hot fix it as well as possible, you know, as, as well as can be. Yeah. But there's still going to come a point where it ends. So, How we, so? we are we're still in the timeline until Europe's on its own because we're not. No. And but yeah, there's, there are threats. You know, I think I think China's a threat. And we should say that China's a threat. We, the the uh, politically correct word that we use in the European Union right now is uh, systemic rival, which means threat in plain English. I mean, that's that's a bit that's a bit of a heavy phrasing now, isn't it? Though, because uh, of course you're right, uh, but it's not like they are going to deploy their armies uh, uh, and invade, uh, sure. be in Paris uh, within a decade or. Sure. There's no, and really I don't no incentive will. about that. Sure, and I don't think they will. Um, but um, but I think we do ourselves a disservice <laughs> if we call that, if we put the level of threat to be boots on the ground in Europe, you know? You know exactly. Yeah. But, that is, uh, but that's a very important distinction to make here, right? Because threat can mean so many things. And like uh, saying China's a threat means so many, uh, can have so many connotations. Right. But the thing is, like, it depends on how you understand security also. If you understand security as being literally just of a military uh, operations, or because there are a lot of um, different aspects to, to security in that sense. Yeah, look, look, China's a threat because China is using its soft power to bully the European Union, and by that I mean bully individual European countries who are being divided and conquered in this sense, to take Huawei, a yeah. country with, you know, what they call vague connections to the party state, to to create European uh, foreign, you know, European infrastructure for 5G rollout, right? Yeah. This is not good. It d goes without saying that taking a foreign power, any foreign power, I don't think we should have the United States do our, you know, <laughs> I don't think we should do, have the United States do our infrastructure for 5G either, you know? How so? It's why, why, like, um, being the devil's advocate here, because of course there, there are ramifications in that, but why is that so big of a problem? What's, what's well, the deal behind it? Also, well, if... uh, quick interjection, I'm sorry, uh, Guimare, my, uh, I, uh, I'm, I'm very happy that you're debug that you're debugging code, and uh, I am actually playing games. I hope uh, you will enjoy watching it though while you are debugging the code and making the very special. Thank you, Luis. Yes, I know. Uh, I am very thankful. Uh, Luis is making dashboards for uh, Vault Europe. And uh, it's going to look amazing. We are going to be able to see a lot more what's going down in the whole of Europe. Anyway, back to the topic. No, just to say this. Look, it goes without saying that if you if you have a foreign power build the infrastructure, they have access to that infrastructure, right? If it's run by a certain company, if it's you know if if it's built by a certain company, run by a certain company, that gives them access, especially since they are in all practical effects. And to all, you know, to as far as we can tell, deeply connected, which is a polite way of saying run by the CCP, the Chinese yeah. Communist Party. And why is it, that? A, why is that a problem? Like, uh, well, how so? China operates. I think. I think China operates on a longer, on a grander scale, politically than than European, you know, European countries yes. usually do, right? China usually operates. I would say. I would hazard the guess, and this is just. Of, you know, I'm spitballing here, but on, on in centuries. Let's put it like this. Wall Street op operates in quarters, if even quarters. Yes. You know, at best, they operate in quarters. The, you know, the American government operates in re-election terms for each and individual politician. Yep. I think European governments, is country by country, but let's say the German government has a future perspective of like 20, 30 years, I think, usually. The Chinese government is way more foresighted than that. Right? Yeah. They, I, I uh, think they work in decades, at least. At least in decades. At least in decades. And that is a smart thing to do, obviously, but it's, it's just dangerous to tie yourself down. Why is it bad for African countries to take, you know, take really advantageous loans from China to build their harbors? Well, now China has their harbors. 
Now, Chinese yeah. companies, which is the, and Chinese companies are the Chinese state. Otherwise, they wouldn't be allowed to do Chinese construction abroad, right? Yeah. De facto. So then you're essentially just allowing a privatized element of the Chinese state to build your harbors or build your whatever, right? It's just not smart. It really right. is not. So why should we allow any foreign power, an Indian company, an American company, a Chinese company, to build infrastructure that will be vital to the next generation of digital communications? It's, it, 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 it's self-explanatorily bad to let this happen. But even, the, but even the German government, the German economy is obviously the largest and strongest within the European Union, right? Even the German government struggles, genuinely struggles, to pipe up against China. Well, I mean, there's a huge problem with that, of course, because it is a novel technology which is going to revolutionize the world, uh, yeah. the, the 5, 5G. So not being able to use it will create an even worse uh, competitive disadvantage. Right. right. Without, so, without saying politicians' disclaimer, not endorsing individual company, but just for example, Ericsson, Nokia, you know, there are European companies, for example, that could do this on it on their own. We don't need to go to Huawei. Can and we though? If, because it, like our development wise, it does take a lot of time. I also, sorry, uh, Luis and, and Toast, I will come back to the Piraeus. Um, but let's finish this one first. But if you look at Ericsson, they are they are pretty much on their way. I mean, uh, yeah. they are developing yeah. super good infrastructure, um, also focusing on different standards like uh, environmental friendliness uh, for for five G already. So, so you they, you'd they, argue that yeah. they, I mean, of course, it goes without saying that the moment they will uh, that uh, Ericsson would be able to do this, then it goes without saying that we should not have Huawei here. But why are we still involved then? Like, uh, because but, but because China tends to make question. just internationally bully people who refuse them. They they cry xenophobia the moment you say that this might be a teeny tiny bit awkward an idea, right? And that is yeah. genuinely what's happening. The Chinese state funds enormous PR campaigns, and you have really bullish, really boorish uh, op eds, com media communications, call outs on social media. Yeah. Anytime somebody would be. Uh, even floating the idea that not enlisting Huawei is is even a is even a possibility. Yeah, right. It is a huge problem. Also, um, hello, uh, Playmaker M nineteen eighty seven. Thank you for being on this stream. Awesome to have you here. We are Volt Europe, and we are talking about uh, foreign affairs while playing very aptly Civilization three. It is and I am, really something. And my name is Joel. I'm on the board of all Europa. I am going off on a tangent why China is bad <laughs> on, in real life. And I'm playing China. Which is amazing. Because now you can feel what is going down, maybe just a bit more. But here's the thing, Russia. right? Um, there's a. Russia. Hello, der unglaubliche Steve. Welcome. Good evening. Welcome here. Um, there is, of course, this issue with uh, China. Uh, having a budding hyper-nationalist uh, tendency yeah. raising, right? This is, uh, yeah. I don't know how uh, how many people know about this right now, but China is really getting very nationalistic in a way that Europe hasn't seen in a very long time, uh, which is very problematic because it will, uh, like soft power becomes, it becomes so much more difficult to engage in diplomacy uh, like but this. I need to add something here. It, it's important to know that, as you say, China's taken a turn for the nationalistic. And th this is the reason why China is malicious, right? The Chinese government does not have European best interests at heart. And why should they, to be honest? Right. Yes, they, they we, love we all love global order and we all love global cooperation. We genuinely do. But it doesn't take, it doesn't take a genius to understand that the Chinese government is playing classic geopolitics. For example, this is why I think that we should scrap the horrific deal that we have on the table right now, Europe and China. So the European Union, for those who don't know, have negotiated a deal with China. What I mean with that is, read for real, France and Germany, chiefly Germany, has last second created a deal that has taken years upon years upon years, I think seven years or something like that, to actually create in its current state. But right before the German presidency of the European Council, which is a rotating thing, country by country, the moment 
they were about to leave. They wanted to leave with a good legacy and do something cool. So they wanted to leave on a high note and ram through a deal with China. The problem is that China did not even agree to the most basic of signing treaties against, you know, something as slight of a problem as slave labor. So the, so the European Union thinks, and by European Union, I mean Germany and France, because they are the countries of big business and industry in the European Union, think yeah. that it's perfectly kosher to ram through a deal that has been backroom negotiated with the con communist country of China, you know, with the communist uh, party of China, to yeah. just say, look, we won't, agree we won't even admit that there's a problem with forced labor. We will not admit that there are labor camps with Uyghurs. And actually, they, China went as far as to threaten to leave the Paris Agreement on climate change if, if people call them out on slave labor with Uyghurs, the Muslim minority that they're genociding. So this trade deal, after a year or multiple years of unprecedented Chinese aggression, you have the genocide of the Uyghurs. You have the dismantling of the democracy of Hong Kong. You have unprecedented international bullying of Taiwan, so on, so forth. And, you know, optics matter. It's well, not as simple yes. as to just say, it's not as simple as to just say we can trade and try to negotiate with them. No, the Chinese government is making a point. They want to make a point that you can get a trade deal with the global, you know, democracy wonks of the European Union. I want to prove that progressive liberal Europe will even accept a trade deal with China because they're so mighty and powerful as a trade, as a, you know, as a trade partner, China, because they're so big that we will, pardon the expression, wipe our chin and walk away, even though we, they do all these things that we still condemn, right? So, but here's the thing, right? Why, uh, why, right? There, there, there is a reason why they're doing this. And the big reason here is probably they need to establish themselves as they uh, um, as the dominant superpower, and sure. showing themselves to have teeth, sh making sure that the U.S. will not, um, <coughs> yeah, overwhelm them as they have done uh, this last half century. Right, just a, a fair warning here. Um, Ethics don't really matter in the international state system, right? Every every uh, global superpower has their own piece of, uh, well, nastiness. Uh, think about the US with the, uh, um, the domino effect and the toppling of governments in uh, many parts of the world, but also Europe uh, and their, um, well, bloody, bloody borders. There is just the fact that um, ethics are very problematic. Um, in uh for well in international relations in that regard that doesn't mean that we should should not change that but it means that we need to take into account that this is a reality that we need to start to overcome i, I think the, I, I think the best way, best way to phrase it is this ethics if you don't understand that ethics are severely severely yes down prioritized in international relations and in geopolitics yeah. If you don't accept that, you will fail to deliver even the most basic of moral standpoints on the international system. It's not about, it's, I think the precedence of all Europe phrased in, in an opinion piece a couple of months ago, that people like to say that Europe is the last herbivore in a world of carnivores. We're soft, that we're sweet, sense. we're nice, yes. and everybody else is a predator, right? Yeah. It's not building a strong hard power European foreign policy that can genuinely stand up to international bullies such as China and so on and so forth, Russia, China, the US when they try to bull rush us, yeah. it isn't about wanting to be a carnivore. It's about at least having the agency to choose our own diet. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That makes perfect sense, with right? That so with that sound bite, I did not come up with myself. I'll be, be I'll BRB for two seconds, okay? <laughs> yes, all good. All right, um, let's see. So for everyone uh, just joining in, we are playing Civilization 3 and on here is uh, Joel Boehmer, the one of the uh, board members of Vote Europe talking about foreign affairs. And yes, Clegs, playing Civ 6 is also really cool. I have played it uh, a while ago, but of course Civ 3 just is a bit more uh, of a nostalgic thing. Just look at all these pixels. It's beautiful. I can't even properly display it on uh, 
on Streamlabs right now, but I love it and nonetheless. Um, and on to that one, we will also talk about the Port of Piraeus. Um, and for some interesting fact bits, uh, China is, of course, uh, one of the big things in the international system right now. They have a huge foreign policy. One of the big ones is um, basically, yeah, engaging with trade and making sure that all the smaller countries in this planet and there is Joe again. Um, Ta -da. What's up? Yes. We are, I was just reiterating everything going down. And, um, but speaking of speaking of autocracies and you know China being horrible, the civil unrest in Beijing. Yes, uh, David, being the resident actual player of this game, how the hell do I fix this? Yeah, go into the into your city menu, might make a double click on it. Yeah, done. Okay, and then you see you have certain amount of content player uh, citizens, and some are unhappy, and some are happy. Happy Labour China, content Labour China, unhappy, unhappy, yes. Yeah, so as long as there are more unhappy than happy citizens, you will have revolt <laughs> and turmoil in your city. Mm -hmm. I'm seeing that Rome has a similar issue right now. Uh, um, yes, you... I actually fixed my Berlin one. Uh, Rome is doing pretty well, actually. Great. So you fix that by, um, well, temporarily by just making the person the worker into uh, an entertainer yep. so you click on the tile where one of the unhappy folks or just anyone is working right now and that turns the citizen into an entertainer wait wait and, I, uh, uh, you, you are better at this game than i am okay so and long term to... you solve it by having uh, military personnel or luxury resources in your mm. city well, I'm gonna make I'm gonna make a subtle political dig and just install a military coup, a military regime. Gotcha. Yeah, that's, that um, solid. that's always but the way you solve do problems. To find, do I need to find the worker, like the actual angry worker, on the map, or no, if you you're in to... the city, if you're in the city menu, just pre like you see where your citizens are working, right? Yeah, I see an unha unhappy labor and unhappy. So I see two unhappy yeah. labor. Yeah. Just click on one tile that should not be worked on anymore that turns the respective citizen into an entertainer. Done. You make it happier. Yeah. Yay! Yes, and then when the next turn and starts, you next... all have happy times again. Woo! Uh, so I found Rome. Yes. Oh! I do want to accept the envoy. Amazing. Hello. It is me, Hello. Draco from the Zulus. Uh, do you ha maybe have any technologies for me? I could offer you this. I have the alphabet. Oh, that sounds good. Cool. I can that make you like read stuff. Yes, and I oh, and I can bury people properly after that. Amazing. Yes, I will accept that. That will increase Truly your amazing. Culture. We are making enormous strides. Civilization is uh, thriving. Yes. Look. Um. Where was so, going with this? Is... Yeah, uh, there are some questions here, uh, if you don't mind to answer, if that's all right with you, because there are a few things that uh, t really neatly tie into this. And the big one is China can do whatever they want because they buy whatever they want in Europe, but in Europe doesn't. But the solution won't be to stop the trade. So uh, we already talked about this a bit. And uh, I think we everyone agrees with that, but there should yeah, be no. a bit of nuance in that, of course. We should Let's not like collapse. We need to trade with China. We are yeah. not protectionist. We are not isolationist. Pretending that we can decouple from China, which is this thing that people keep saying about uh, the US and China, we should decouple the economies, right? It's something that is, is frequent in US political discourse. It's impossible. It's, it's, prete it's stupid, it's pretend, and it's populist. We it's, won't. It's I scary. Want to, I like it's not just I, populist. Yeah. It's it's scary to do that. Is yeah. uh, problematic as hell. I, I'll put it like this: even if it was possible to decouple entirely from China, I don't think it is desirable to decouple entirely from China. However, all I'm saying is the current tra trade deal with China is bad. We need to show China that we are willing to trade, which is good in the sense that you know we are actually ha we actually do have this trade deal on the table they see that they can come close to it we need to reject this deal and go back to the drawing table the european market is bigger than the chinese market we yes. have enormous negotiating power if we reach out and take that power but we need so, to act as one again because that's exactly, the whole point right yeah exactly because if you have if you have 
Germany look at German big business, <laughs> and you know, if you have German big business and German and French big, big business, they go, essentially be the driving force behind a deal with China. Obviously, it's going to be thoroughly immoral, which yeah. isn't strange or surprising in the slightest. It's just what else do you expect? Yeah. Right. So obviously, yes, we need to work together because we need to trade with China. You know, I, I've written op-eds in the you know in, in the media saying we need to trade deal with China. Then the sad thing is that uh, a few months after I wrote that op-ed, China deli- China delivered proposed a trade deal, and to my horror, the trade deal was worse than the status quo. Like th- there's a reason they want to do this at this point, as I said. You know, Hong Kong. They, they they have dismantled the democracy of Hong Kong. They have bullied Taiwan yes. on an unprecedented scale. Taiwan is the country with the biggest success when it comes to handling COVID. And they are they were bullied out of their observer status. Obviously, Taiwan is not recognized as a country by the international community. So they, they were not even allowed to observe the World Health Organization's meetings anymore uh, be, because China wants to make a point against Taiwan. Yeah. They have... They are actively running a genocide of Uyghurs. What's happening in Tibet? All these things are happening at the same time, and China wants to make a point that they can get a trade deal through. As I said, we can't accept it now. We need to take a trade deal, but that trade deal has to be on some sort of terms, and talks of profit and trade and, and prosperity need to give way to some sort of baseline conversation about taking the genuine power that Europe has to stand for actual yeah uh a moment russia wants to trade with me who's russia so here's a uh, um uh, that, that would be me but i didn't especially want to to trade with you i don't know why i opened that <laughs> well offer me something so but it, that, that, that this is of course a, a, a huge nuance to make right because um we need to there are so many elements at play here first of all the one thing that nobody really wants is the collapse of the international world order Right. Uh, just yeah. a historical fact, uh, the amount of international trade and prosperity and peace that was um, here and built up over the course of millennia collapsed in 1918. And it only got back or, or since the First World War and it only got back to pre-1914 levels in 1998. Collapsing this will uh, not be very beneficial. In fact, it, will, it makes the world a more dangerous place. At yeah, the same no, no. time, uh, yeah, nobody wants that, and we shouldn't want that. And discussing strategic autonomy and you know the European Union standing on its own doesn't mean we should actually stand on our own for the sake of it. It means that we need to be able. Exactly, we need to be ourselves. able to. We need to be able to uh, engage with the players as an equal uh, partner rather than being a play ball, because that's what's going down, right? You have, uh, the, 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 we are moving from a, uh, I do not have iron working, uh, sorry, Draco. We are moving from a unipolar world, meaning that we only have one superpower, uh, which was the United States for a very brief time period, right? You had, uh, after the collapse of the Soviet Union, you had the, you had the US being the dominant superpower for a bit. This uh, is just slowly starting to degrade, and that now we have China as its competitor, and China needs to show its teeth. At the same time, there are so many superpowers, uh, or, well, uh, bigger powers, that also need to show that they're here, right? So you have, of course, uh, the big one, uh, Europe. Uh, we are also, we have the potential to become a dominant power, but we are not. We are not an equal power, no uh, actual superpower, whether it is China or Russia or even the US uh, is really taking us as an equal partner in this regard. Am I wrong here? No, you're not. You're not. Because we're not. Because we're not one united player yeah. yet. We, we are a united player nominally on trade. We pretend to be united on trade. But then we see Germany just go off on its own abuse its position and uh, bilaterally negotiate a deal with China for the yeah. for Europe and then yeah. ram it through the European institutions. Now, I think genuinely that there might be a chance of torpedoing this deal and throw it back, you know, and say, we need to renegotiate this. The trade deal with China is so important that it won't break down, right? Yeah, it if, needs to continue yeah, yeah, for China, everyone involved. It's worth so much to both parties that rejecting it at this stage will not, well, it's going to cause an uproar in Beijing and they're going to throw a shit fit, 
but you know they can throw a shit fit all they want they're still going to come back to negotiate yeah. that's why i mean i mean hell the, the the chinese foreign ministers went to the czech parliament the czech senate actually yes. and threatened <laughs> a couple of months it was last year and said that there would be serious consequences the reason for which was that the chinese sorry the the czech um the, the, the czech senate speaker had gone on a state visit to taiwan yeah now you don't know china uh, has a one called the one china policy where they refuse to acknowledge taiwan as a legitimate state now hot take bolts hot take my personal hot take is the european union should call this bluff normally china refuses to do trade or like refuses to interact with countries that recognize taiwan because Taiwan lays claim to being a legitimate China from before the yeah. uh, Chinese Revolution. The what I say is that's all fun and games, and you can you know you can stand behind the one China policy when the European countries are one by one. Germany is tiny compared to China, and Germany is the largest European market. Obviously, you can threaten and hold kind of market access over their heads because they're so small compared to China. Now, the European Union is larger than China. Important to note. So, I believe we should call the bluff. The European Union, as a unilateral whole, should recognize the state of Taiwan. Should should send and you know should uh, should invite a Taiwanese embassy, not a representative, nothing else, a genuine embassy. This the language matters. Calling it a representative means they're kind of an observer, like Palestine or whatever, you know. But calling it an embassy genuinely matters. So, and here's the thing, that would definitely tie in with the North American way of going at it, right? The US yep. uh, already does the same. Uh, it would sh show a clear sign of us being um, in yep. that same area and they cannot uh, do anything about it. It will definitely sour relations on a uh, long-term scale though. Well, you, I, I think that's doing it a disservice. I think China doesn't have our best interests at heart, right? The, China, of course. Actually... But what, so, the, what the point it's is... Gonna um... It's going to sour it on short terms, but it's going to level the playing field in the long term. I think that... Will it go? To... Yeah, I think so. I genuinely think so. How? I think that because it's a bluff. The one China bluff is a, is a lie. The one China policy is a bluff that relies on the fact that the international community is not organized well enough to call it out. Right? The European market being larger than that means that what are they going to do? China has way better market access to Europe. They yes. have way better terms with the European Union than we do in China. In fact, this is what China is not open to any other country. Exactly. Uh, yeah. We invite Chinese companies. We invite Chinese companies. And I think we should have Chinese companies, just not for tech infrastructure and like security reasons, right? But in general, obviously, we should trade as much as possible with China. However, they, we should also be allowed to trade with China in China. Right? You, if if, if yeah. Chinese companies are welcome in Europe, European countries should be well. European companies should be welcome in China. This goes without saying. It has to be reciprocal. But is However, it is it is it that big of a bluff though? Because I I I'd argue that they can do well without Europe at this point. Yeah, they can. Yeah, they can. But China wants to be the next global power, right? China has superpower ambitions. China wants to succeed Pax Americana. Doing that means bringing the European Union in line. How? And by... Why? I don't think that's really necessary for them, actually. I think they can manage perfectly fine without... They have no interest in uh, in doing that. What they actually do... They actually clearly do, by the... By they actually, yeah. No, I'm actually opposed you. They actually clearly do have interest in bringing Europe in line, given how massive of a, of a five-year-old tantrum they throw every single time any single country, large or small, would even float the idea that it is not acceptable for them to invite uh, to Huawei to build the most crucial tech infrastructure well, of this true. generation. They are but the thing is also, if you want to build uh, Pax Americana, like you say, uh, for, for China, and they want to be like the next superpower, they kind of have to have also Europe's uh, yeah. interests, uh, not interests, but at least have Europe on board, because you cannot be the superpower if you don't have anyone recognizing you as a superpower. Well, of course, that's true. On, on but we need to, I we need to yeah. show to China that we will neither... We need to show to China 
that we will neither isolate them because that's nonsense. That's protection is nonsense and it's impossible, right? Yeah. So we need to show to China that we will trade with them as an equal. We will work with them as an equal. We will not put ourselves in a trade deal with China that compromises our own ability to stand up to our own morals. It is not about whether or not we can force China to become a democracy. We can't. We don't have that power. But what we can do is refuse a trade deal that gives free leeway to our companies in Europe to sponsor state-run genocidal re-education forced labor camps. Right? That's slavery. It's modern slavery. And we don't need to do that. We need to show them that we are happy to play ball, provided that the rules of the game yes, exactly. do not include genocide. They, Same thing they need the to adhere, if they want to trade, they need to adhere to these rules. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Like, there's a yeah. baseline. There's a red line in the sand where beyond, like, behind which or below which we do not drop on so, our standards. But, but here's the thing. and uh, You can please, please prove me wrong on this one. Um, right. the, as far as I know, China has a few really big grand strategy uh, yep. goals. Bring as many resources as they can to China and make sure that Taiwan is not accepted as a um, as as an independent nation. And aside from that, uh, I don't really think that China really cares. That's I, the whole no, thing. Xi uh, Jinping's statement before was really clear in saying that their grand strategy does not include uh, communication all that much. It, it, it includes autarky and um, retrieving resources. Yeah. Look, I think it's imp I think it's important to note that every every you know wars wars are won by soldiers, but politics is won by stories. Yes. Right. And the Chinese story. You know, they're not communist in the slightest. They're communist in the sense yes. that they're authoritarian. They are the most rough and tumble, hardcore, crony capitalist country on planet Earth. Yes. Right? Crucial to understand. Uh, however, for the Chinese party state to legitimize its own authoritarianism and its own autocracy, you need to play into the foundational myth of the country. And there, yeah. Yeah. For the foundational myth of the country to be valid, they need to be the real China. And they are only the real China if you accept the Chinese revolution as glorious and great. If you don't, the real China is Taiwan. Right? The real China is Taiwan, which is the country for those who fled from the Chinese revolution and refused to acknowledge the Chinese revolution as legitimate. So, by showing them this, it's, I no, obviously, on, on some sort of material level, it doesn't matter to them. There's no, there's no hardcore level of resources in Taiwan. That's why it's a bluff, right? It's a bluff because it doesn't really matter to them, and they will be forced to accept it if the price of keeping up the bluff is too high. However, it will, it is so ingrained in the very fabric of their founding myth as a country, in its current iteration, that it will prove the point to them yeah. that we won't be fucked with, to speak plainly. Because if we can recognize Taiwan and get away with it, which we cannot if we do it individually, but which we can if we do it together. Because I can tell you that if the European Union as a whole recognizes Taiwan, the United States will take roughly four hours to do it. That's how long it's going to take. They will wake up the White House in the middle of the night if they have to. And if the European Union leads the way, yeah, then it's true. Then, then, you know, the plug is up, off, the water's flowing, the floodgates of heaven are open, and we have a deluge. The Western world will, will, would recognize it because if the European Union, who tends to be the weaker party in these kinds of power games, yeah. if, the, if the European Union leads this, there is no incentive to not do it. At that point, the Chinese, the Chinese state has to decide, are we genuine about our ambitions to be a global superpower? In which case, we will need to swallow this and smile happily in the UN and say, well, you know, tough shit. We can't really do anything about it. We'd love to trade with you, you know, <laughs> you. Or, or they stand it by and they lose decades upon decades of trying to internationalize. They lose such enormous progress. Right? 
Yeah, so they kind of need to. They need to. Right. Uh, they need to. Right. Fair enough. The thing they need to do is so the thing they need to do for material reasons, which is crucial for them. So it's yeah. why they will do it eventually. But again, not even not even China has the luxury of morals in the international space. So if we make this point to them, they have to smile and wave. Yeah. But it proves the point to them that they it, it has to make them realize the Chinese government. Beijing will then realize, Xi Jinping will have to concede the point that they can't just be the bully. They can be bullied too. And there you have it. That's the whole thing, right? Um, all right. So um, there are some questions, some new questions here. Um, I think we already... Darum glaube ich Steve. We already uh, answered your question about how the EU can influence China to become more democratic, right? That's, uh, um, we can't, basically. They have their own way. No country has uh, ever uh, changed their policy based on either uh, soft trade or hardline things. In fact, uh, oftentimes when countries try it, the opposite results will happen. Wait, could you repeat the question? I'm so sorry. So uh, the question is how the EU can influence China to, to become more democratic. But uh, as, as you already stated, Joel, um, it's basically impossible. We can't. You can't topple. Uh, yes, I have a question. What is Berlin doing in the Balkans? I put it there. I like that place. Um, at the same time, yep. we have um, a neo-realist. Sorry going off on a tangent again europe cannot and should not try to influence china to become more democratic it is bound to fail we can try to uh make sure that their trade can happen only yep. in ways that uh are aligned with our values so stop with the genocide we um. basically say that we can't do that I, I have a question for you then. Uh, so yes. to to be more uh, centered on uh, on uh, European debates, if uh, you're saying you want to to make sure that the trades uh, basically are uh, uh, or, or more respectful or more in line with with our values, um, how do you conceive like a a what? united EU foreign policy to make sure that, for example, France respects. Um, those values the same way that uh, Czechia or Italy or Portugal um, adhere to the exact same trades. Because, for example, some countries in Europe are more or less close to uh, to China. So in this case, how do you make a single united um, EU policy? Well, is that a question for me or back to the... Well, I kind of go for you. <laughs> Whoever <laughs> wants to take it. <laughs> stop with the genocide because it's not about stopping china from performing a genocide because we can't you know it i wish do we could they want we can't. but it's very simple it's really simple european foreign policy should not and cannot be about forcing others to do something they refuse to do because we just don't do not have the clout to do so we just don't we don't have the power right however and is that actually the way we want to go again, again? we're just it is about making sure that we operate on a global scale in a way that allows us to be true to our own morals. That means that we, we cannot stop China from doing its own thing in its own country. However, we do not need to give market access to European countries to that sector. So we could easily write in self-restriction clauses into the trade deal where European countries who fund and who you know, participate in areas of the Chinese market that are run on what is internationally considered to be slave labor are sanctioned, not by China, because we can't force that and we can't force them to stop doing what they're doing, but we can sanction European companies ourselves. And because China wants to trade it with Europe specifically to get European countries, you know, European companies to China in a way that they can control, they will need to adapt because if they don't adapt, they don't get those sweet euros pouring into the country. Yes. All right. Sorry. Um, a couple of things going on here. Uh, yeah, I, th I think uh, uh, 
I concur with you, Joe, in this regard. Um, we need to make sure that we uh, ultimately real uh, European foreign affairs, in my mind, is stagnated uh, yep. as long as we do not act as one. And in that regard, I'm a skeptic due to the fact that uh, I don't think that Europe is uh, bold enough to stop the deal from happening. If we do, however, then we get the ball rolling because that will set a precedent. Hmm? The European Parliament, right, because the European Parliament, being the only body that is directly elected of the European bodies, obviously a massive case for an actual European government and not the bullshit yes. commission that we have today. But I digress. The point is, if we look at the Parliament, they might actually face democratic scrutiny and they might actually face the pressure yeah. of having to accept this. The commission doesn't. The commission sits safely for the entirety of the mandate. Yeah. The council sits safely because this, the council is only responsible for its national electorates. So they can do yeah, whatever. And the, and the, the mandate is about like six months anyway for the council. So. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. You, you, you're out before you're held accountable. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So the parliament who sits with this for five years will actually be held accountable. So that's where the fight will go. And it is actually possible to, to ex explain, to, you know, to get and motivate the parliament to tank the deal. That's not to say that we should tank trade with China. We need trade with China, but we don't need this trade deal. We need a better one. And because it is so important to work with China, or rather, how to put this? Because it is so important for China to get the European Union to like them, they will come back. They'll throw a shit fit in public. Their ambassadors will cry havoc. Their, the Chinese foreign ministry will say that there are going to be grave consequences. The spiel will go on for three, four more cycles. There will be a decapo. Mm. And then they'll come back for another re rehash of the trade deal. And that trade deal will be better. So steal yourselves, refuse the trade deal, get a better trade deal. Yeah. We need to trade with China. We also need to trade with China in a way that doesn't make us humongous hypocrites. That is also a very big problematic thing. Also, Draco, I have a question. How can I open the chat? <laughs> <laughs> also, you I have, have to yet find to find the toll the button. Speak of Chinese isolationism, I have two cities and I'm in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, I, I'm coming. I'm next to you. you. I saw you. I see your border, Joel. I'm. I can see you. I can see Shanghai. Was amazing. Fucking. I will sector. contact you. Also, PG thirteen. Sorry, China. Joel. PG-13, I am so sorry. Why <laughs> why is my settler not finishing up? It's been complete in one turn. Oh, you need at least three citizens in your city because it's minus two. If you'd have less, the city destroys itself, which is not what? happening. How, how do I... Just well, wait. then, how do I expand Shanghai? Um, build irrigations where the citizens are working, except for if it's Greenland, grassland, wait, sun. Okay. No point. Build irrigation, right? Select destination. Okay, let's do this. All right. Also, uh, next question. Uh, sorry for uh, not reacting to your the chat so much. I think this is a uh, uh, topic wise. It's really difficult to just interrupt because it's a very difficult point uh, to make with these things because nuance is so important here, right? You, you can't just say we need to do this and then leave it hanging because that will aggravate a lot of people. And it's also wrong. There's just so many different threats going on. But again, Moving on to the other one, um, one concept in regards to China, Scalester says, consider the century of humiliation, needs some debate though, I'm afraid, as far as I know, as well as also there will order by Kissinger, just also, uh... right, so the century of humiliation and the world order by Kissinger are possible motives, so uh, in regards to China, what sure, are your thoughts about that? I mean, that's as simple as it is, right? Yeah, sure. The the perceived center of humiliation, um, which, you know, I, I, I don't know how to quickly summarize it, but essentially it's, uh, is the, you know, between the 1800s and the 19, you know, mid 1800s, 1900s, right? Of, of, of China just being subject to the international order and just not having that big of a, you yep. know, big of a set of the international order and how deeply this hurt the Chinese political psyche, right? Yeah. Yeah, that is probably a great motivation for China to posture right now and strong man. Sure, I can get that. From some sort of sociological perspective, I can even understand it. That doesn't mean I need to play ball with it. 
that as any Europe needs to play ball with it because we don't, we don't really. need. No, look, here's the thing. We do not, <laughs> you know, you can lay on the couch all you want and say that you did, you had a poor relationship with your mother to, to you know, Sigmund Freud. <laughs> that doesn't get paid for work. You know, you can have a shit parent relationship all you want, and I hope that's PG-13, but you don't get to pay it forward. Yeah. So I'm sorry. Yeah, the center, even, even assuming that every single thing in the center of humiliation is exactly correct, and the Chinese understanding of its own horrible history is correct, even understanding that, I don't give a damn. Well, and that's the whole point, right? I'm we, gonna, um... for, European, for, for Europe's place in the international order too, because guess what? The European history, is one of us fighting ceaselessly for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years until the European Union and liberal democracy. And if that isn't a good motivator to be slightly better than what we've been in the past, I don't know what is. Yeah. So I'm sorry, it's not about bullying China into another center of humiliation. It's not about strong manning and trying to become Pax Americana world police. It's about staying true to the values that we pretend to hold close to ourselves at home. And there is also there is also some. So on, so. Sorry, yeah, I'm. Uh, I interrupted you. Sorry, Joe. Um, you have this issue with uh, ethics, of course, because we're a bit of a disposition here, right? We want to make sure that we uh, value human rights, uh, liberal world order, and things like that. At the same time. This also creates a bit of a predicament for us uh, in international affairs, doesn't it? Because uh, we are not that willing to topple some governments, or at least we shouldn't. What's your thought on that? Because uh, I also saw Kissinger, and Kissinger uh, defined the American uh, foreign affair for, uh, well, still actually. And he basically stated a very different thing. Is that something that we uh, should also try to go for? Well, should we be so, some sort of bombs away neo-realist uh, Kissingerian, well, I'm, Kissingerian I'm power you, player? I am very much playing the devil's advocate here, right? But it's important to uh, at least touch that base, right? Because the world is a very... Uh, the international world order is collapsing slowly but steadily uh, but, by, yeah. way, uh, by the way who's russia quick question that's me all right well offer me something and i'll give you i'll give you the ability to work iron I just did Whee! i am rich you now. can contact me at your southern border too by the way yeah i'm trying to find you but i found robin Ooh. <laughs> okay <laughs> I'm, uh, in a moment oh that that uh Mike, you just contacted me. You have anything yeah. to offer? Mysticism, maybe? I have mysticism, yes. Oh, wait, cool. wait, 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 wait. You can wait a little bit longer. I'll give you writing in four turns for that. Okay, I will. I will wait for that. I like that. Cool. And yeah, Joel, if you have any technologies, feel free to contact me. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm happy to give you some of them, but I am, look, I am quali you know, qualifiably the worst player of this game right now. I have no clue what I'm doing. I uh, no idea what I'm doing either. Okay, <laughs> okay then, then I'm I'm entering Chinese territory now because Joel didn't find me. Look, I was just gonna say, um, ah, accept the envoy. Hello, Shaka Zulu. Okay. Uh, I can offer you the alphabet. Ooh. If you have anything <laughs> for me. Uh, London, turn cities. I'm not gonna give you Shanghai. Um, <laughs> How do you even know what technology you have? You you click the technology you you click the technology <laughs> in the offer tab and it gives you a bunch of things you can give them. Now I will just accept it um, because I n n nope nope you got offered me something nah right. thank you. Um, what I would you recommend uh, that you research something like right. mathematics and then you come back to us, mighty Zulus. Right. Um, well, how do I you know? Research again. Is okay, it for for everyone who's not sure how to research, either you press F six or you press the advisor button in the upper left, F6, and then go to right? science advisor. Nice. Right. I'm researching. I'm I'm researching mathematics. Cool. That's uh, awesome. Okay. As soon as you have that, uh, I'll trade with you. I'm currently researching writing and then philosophy. And Rome is supposed to research mysticism and maybe polytheism. Afterwards. I have mysticism, and I am going for polytheism now. Yes. I did and, start um, investing in writing, but I guess I should cool. stop doing that. <laughs> and maybe Russia, do you already have horseback riding? Uh, 
Do I have horse back riding? I'm checking that. No, I do not. It, it's what um, I said before. Maybe you no. research that. That's some proper global international uh, research cooperation happening here. Ooh, I am this check. is how the world should horse look like. Riding. And you can increase your research output if you click F1 or you just go to the domestic advisor. Oh, cool. uh, at the top, upper right, basically, you see how much in percentage you spend of your budget on research or on happiness. I basically never focus on happiness because, well, good citizens of my country, but research is important. And uh, that's currently for me at 60%, but it really depends on how much money you spend on your military and other stuff. No, uh, um, damn it. All right. I think I'm learning stuff about this game. It's amazing. I'm happy to hear that. Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> uh, another question for you then, uh, uh, Joel, if you want. Why okay, is it sure. so... Just wrap up the... Uh, sorry, just wrap yeah. up the Kissinger point. Yeah. Should we be closer to him than we are today? Yes, but that doesn't really mean anything. Should we be toppling governments left, right, and center like some sort of, you know, manifest destiny, you know, neoconservatives? No, absolutely not. Should we, should we Why sample? Not? Well, ask George W. Bush how how his foreign policy is doing right now today, and you might have a, you might have an answer to it. It's doing terribly. <laughs> is 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 a spoiler. And mo most everything that we see in the Middle East right now is a direct effect, indirect or direct, by, you know, effect of George W. Bush setting things on fire. Now, without endorsing war in the Middle East in principle, at least his father was competent in going about it. The younger one was not. Well, um, I mean, it's by, by far not the only thing happening, right? Because uh, toppling governments has been going on since the 60s, as far as I know. I think it started with the Truman Doctrine, even. So that's the 50s. Yeah. No, no, it, 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 it's really pretty simple. It doesn't, it's not sustainable. And it works as long as you can just bully, like, it works as long as you keep rolling forward, right? At least, at least as you keep jumping between position to position. So, and, and, well, uh, of course, also a okay. very important disclaimer about this. We are not discussing that we should do it. We should state why uh, this is an important thing to discuss, right? Because... Right. Well, that's, that's, I, I think the point comes down to the metaphor I went with earlier. It's not about whether or not we want Europe to be a carnival like the United States or a carnival like China or whatever. Europe is herbivore not by choice but by necessity because we do not have the tools to choose our own diet. We need to be able to at least choose what we have for dinner. Right now, we the thing is, like, if you don't consider yourself as a as a carnivore, no one will uh, ever consider you as a carnivore. Well, exactly. Speak softly. And sp uh, sp sp speaking of old uh, American doctrines, speak softly. Carry a big stick. Yeah. We currently yeah. we don't we currently do not own a stick. We don't even <laughs> we, we don't even own a little wand. So if we could Ooh. actually own, it, I want to watch know, Harry if... Potter now. Mm, well, this <laughs> this analogy went absolutely south very quickly. Yes. But you, I think you my point. If the first thing you associate European foreign policy with is Harry Potter, you've done something wrong. I'm, I mean, it's a good show. But anyway, div uh, digressing here. I'm sorry. Uh, we are in the middle of a talk about um, making sure that Europe is... Um, a force on its own so uh, speaking in the metaphor that joe has been using not just a herbivore but making us a an omnivore uh with teeth at least am Quick i right question. yes exactly and uh, to interrupt with some gameplay who's being egypt is that an npc egypt is yes. an npc yeah and i am on the border of egypt at the moment also. Yeah, I found and they are I meant hyper aggressive they have so many troops yes but do we want That's to? Why it that? would have been important that Rome closes the Bosporus, but um, Mike uh, missed it by one tile, and now they can go into Europe. <laughs> oh, well. Well, um, hmm. on the topic of on the topic of really bizarre foreign policy combination that we even see today, which is a historic fucking failure. Sorry, PG thirteen <laughs> of the Europe of the European Union. Russia and China are pretty aligned on the global scale right now, which is yeah. a historic failure of the European Union and the Western world. 
not because we should accept all the stunts that Russia is pulling. We shouldn't accept their bullshit. We shouldn't accept their bullying internationally or their aggression in the neighborhood. We shouldn't, and I don't stand for that. But we have been so incompetent in how we handle Russia that they have gone and jumped in bed with Beijing. Well, and Russia, it was... But just to say this, two conversations at once. The first thing is Russia is deeply afraid of China, and the fact that they'd yes. rather jump in bed with China than Europe is a massive indictment of Europe's ability to do foreign policy. Secondly, on the topic of Russia and China, do you want to invade Egypt, Robin? Do you want to want invade to Egypt? Uh, let, me re let me get all my troops first. Yes. Well, it's going to take like 13 rounds for me to get all my soldiers yeah, up there. Yeah, minimum. Uh, build um, the roads first. China, maybe you build your roads through Kazakhstan. That's more flat than through the Himalaya. Um, and I'll need some time to expand northwards, and Rome is already where it's supposed to be. Can I... Okay, so, David, is it... How? I guess the point is that everything is basically more flat than the Himalaya. No? <laughs> yeah, yes. Well, um... I don't want a worker. Wait. It's a worker. I need to find a worker. But... Ah, there you are. My point is... Is there any way for me to plan out a road construction? Yes. Uh, yeah, you can... Yeah, go ahead, sorry. There's a special menu. You might have to go to Preferences, upper left. Yeah. Uh, that triangle yeah. and then Preferences. Yeah. And then uh, there on the upper right, second from the top, Show Advanced Unit Action Buttons. Ooh, fancy. Make sure it's activated. Now it is. Make sure then that you save the settings with that round circle. Oh, wait, let me and just check. And then you the should up. see the extra available button for workers build a road too. Wait, let me just see. Uh, uh, I need to do a new round because my, my last worker has already moved. Ah, no, I actually have a worker. Uh -huh. Okay, let's see. Um, Build road two. Yes. Right. And I just click on a tile. Right. Maybe maybe not randomly into the darkness. Um, no, no, no. I know step. which tile I want to build. I know exactly which mountain path I want to pass through. All right, my... yeah. Then. So I just And you click. can do it like that. Perfect. Awesome. Amazing. Writing right. will be done in two turns, by the way, Mike. Sorry? And then we yeah. can... Tr Perfect. Writing will be done in two turns, and then we can trade mysticism versus trading. Awesome. Uh, writing. Yeah. Nice. How do you have such an overview of your, of yeah. your science? I, I just press the button and look what I have. <laughs> In your lower right, you see when something is done. Hmm. All right. Uh, who still has to play? Gandalf. Gandalf. Oh. Uh... Yeah, but Gandalf is at the is the uh, the one with the most points out of all of us. Really? Far. Interesting. I don't know why they did, though. <laughs> what well, did you say? Here, this is a very good... Um, like, all of these countries, uh, all of our enemies are bigger. I mean, I'm off screen, but I'm here. Yeah, all good. So, uh, moving on to a smaller or, or uh, a more inward approach uh, about what does Europe need to do to get a joined uh, thing, right? Because that's the whole problem. We need to yep. start showing our teeth. We need to integrate our foreign affairs, but we are very divided. Right. right. Uh, at this I point, think... there's a hardline answer and there's a pragmatic answer. Let's start with the hardline principled answer, which is we need a European government for real and not this hodgepodge commission. Well, the, the whole point is also not not just the not just the commission. Actually, I have a question for you on this one, but I think the uh, one of the, the biggest uh, aspects is also uh, get rid of the. Uh, of the the the, the no unanimity in the no. unanimity in the council of foreign affairs in the, the foreign affairs council. That's that's the other answer because yeah. that's far fetched. There's the less far fetched one. That's where I'm going. So, on the one hand, the the simple solution, and by simple I mean difficult to implement, easy to see, is you know we need a European government. We we can't just have a commission which is essentially one loyal person from each government being sent over. Who just then gets sorted into the commission pretending that the european you know run by allegedly a european president of the commission which just so happens to be a washed out german minister of defense 
couldn't even do that right. But, you know, I digress. At the same time, we need, uh, as Robin went for, it doesn't really cut it to just say, you know, that you need... Um, that, that you can't just say, well, we need a European government to stop at that. Because you need more, there are things you can do. The fact that so many decisions are still taken by unanimity in the Council yes. of Ministers is ridiculous. For example, let's take Turkey. People wanted to... Uh, let, actually, let's try this. Turkey and uh, uh, Belarus. So, mm -hmm. the European Union wanted to sanction Belarus for its atrocious behavior towards its own citizens and, uh, during the protests. And uh, they wanted to sanction Lukashenko and the people around him. Okay, fair enough. Now, problem. Cyprus is angry about Turkey. Validly angry. I think Cyprus was right in demanding sanctions against Turkey. That's another question. But in principle, they, they had a point. However, the system is so fundamentally flawed that they decided to veto, you know, veto the ability for the European Union at large with, to, to do something they even agreed with in principle, which was sanction Belarus for its behavior towards its own citizens and authoritarianism, yeah. but because they wanted Europe to act on Turkey, which Europe should have done in any, anyway, but the, it, the point is systemic, not on, print, you know, not on policy, right? So, so then they decided to throw a, essentially throw a shit fit and refuse to accept the European Union sanctioning Lukashenko until they could, you know, until the European Union would sanction Turkey, which, sorry, which, um, which Germany is afraid of doing. Now, eventually, due to soft power and Cyprus being a small country, they withdrew their veto and uh, Europe, the European Union got the sanctions through. But you already look like a moron, you know? If the European Union goes, ah, yes, we're going to sanction this because this country is a failed state, and immediately one of the smallest member states can veto it, you don't really have a position of power when you want to project strength. No. You, you've you kind of lost the international game because looks matter. Communication matters. And, uh, I, you know, it, it's just so stupid. You need to get rid of the vetoes. You need to get rid of even the qualified majority. You need simple majority decisions in the council. Ideally, the council should just become a senate of directly elected people. But until that point in the dreaming future, <laughs> get rid of the vetoes, please. But I mean, uh, one one example that I felt like was the the, the most uh, the, the most like stupid representation of that uh, of that veto power. I think was in uh, late uh, end end twenty nineteen or beginning twenty twenty. Um, there was a decision to keep the uh, peacekeeping operation, uh, the the EU military operation, on the coast of Libya. Um, so keep running the operation, and that was vetoed by Austria, which is a country that does not have any, um, that does not take part actually in that operation, and does not have any uh, navy uh, in that uh, in that operation. Mm -hmm. So it was essentially vetoed by only one country that is not even taking part in that uh, in that operation, and you, you cannot you cannot um, have long term. Projects and missions uh, on the on the foreign uh, foreign policy side. If you do not even if you, if someone can veto your decision, uh, someone who is not even participating in those in those decisions, who does not he's who is not even a stakeholder in those decision, who can veto the decision. Yeah, exactly. It's just yeah. a fundamentally broken system. Because look, let's put it like this: the European Union has three main institutions, right? The Council of Ministers, the Commission, and the Parliament. And they all three operate on fundamentally different ideas on what the European Union should be about. The Parliament operates on what I think is the best principle, the, a Europe of the people. It's a democratic institution. It's, it's elected directly by the people and is the one with the most democratic accountability, obviously. Then you have the Council of Ministers, which is a Europe of nations. Yep. The, in, in line with the principles of how the Council operates, it's an alliance. It's a bunch of countries who, will, you know, sometimes they like to cooperate on certain joint issues. So it's an alliance. That means that you don't move unless everybody's in alignment. Makes sense from its own logic. It just doesn't work in practice. Good idea. Doesn't work. And the commission is a Europe of bureaucrats. This is why lobbying in the European Union is so different from lobbying in the United States. The European Union is fundamentally technocratic. It's, yes. it, it's a bureaucratic body of of experts. Now, there's some semblance of politicization on the leadership level. Sure, 
but the commissioners are actually rather subject to the um, to the chiefs of staffs uh, because the commission president has a lot of power over the chiefs of staffs of the, the individual commissioners and such. The point is, it's, it's fundamentally the way the commission operates is bureauc bureaucratic and technocratic and apolitical. In fact, it is uh, the whole reason behind it is to circumvent or at least be able to make political decision making yeah. uh, without having to go through the hassle of the alliance principles yes. of the council or the political hassle of actually having to have a democratic legitimacy of it by the yes. parliament. Now, very problematic but you, uh, digressing right right you can run through any of these principles and build a stable union right you could build this colossus this hegemon of bureaucracy which is the commission and run with that and it'll work you might not like it but it'll work you could also say that the european union should be nothing more than an alliance and then you have the council then these to be honest then you might as well just scrap the parliament cancel the parliament cancel the commission just run everything through the ministers that can also work i don't want that future but it's a future that will actually function according to its own principles now <laughs> however you can also have a, a fully democratic parliament that means that the parliamentarians of the EP should actually be allowed to start creating laws on their own. They are not even allowed to initiate legislation because that has to come from the Commission. It's, it's really toothless. We have a European yeah. Parliament that we elect, elect directly that only get to have a say in EU lawmaking. They don't get to start it. The people you elect to the European Parliament are not allowed to initiate legislation that they promise. They can only opine on the legislation that is started by the Commission. Like These three institutions are feature by design created with fundamentally different ideologies of what the European Union should be. And I think the option here is to either go for more Europe or less Europe. We have to choose. We can't have this half measure right now. And we can't have it going forward. So but, and here, um, here, here, like, okay, so there are a couple of things going on. First, Joel, uh, did you get the barbarian warning? I did not. There, and if I did... Right, but, uh, all right, so I have a scout running through china as you might know it's that yep. little black figure walking around uh, and i'm walking through the hills and i saw some barbarians approaching from the west so you might get prepared for that and not send workers in that direction alone without protection right where, where and, are uh, they are they the are the barbarians the barbarians are just oh, classified as I, I want you like three turns ago and they were in that what desert is that gobi i don't know I, uh, by I'm the way, uh, Joel, I am next to uh, Memphis. Yes, I am too. I, I have all my uh, all my units uh, there, ready to. A regular. Uh, to wait. You're already engaging with Egypt now, militarily. All right. Not yet. Yeah, not I yet. Got, just got my people I'm, there. I'm not uh, not doing anything for the I moment. I told you so, but because the 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 wall, sorry, the the road I'm building. Is taking such a long time. I mean, it's a road. Just run through your turns quickly, and then in twenty minutes we can engage. <laughs> well, I am running through my my turns as quickly as possible. Wait, actually, hang on a moment. I have an idea. Oh. I have it. Are you doing, oh. are you doing a, a great leap forward? Uh -huh. <laughs> oh. Yeah, that, that's what China needs. Yeah. Uh, Maybe they need a revolution. Hmm. Well, you know, okay, um, actually, Joel, I got a, I got a question for you, though. Mm. Because you said uh, that the, the, um, the way forward would be to have a, um, a EU government, right? Mm -hmm. Inside the EU government, what is the role of the high representative? Well, the high representative doesn't exist. The high representative is, is replaced by an actual foreign minister with a foreign ministry. Just to be sure, so, um, uh, can you what explain is... what the high representative is for the audience as well, please? Robin, do you want to take it away or should I? By all means, I've spoken for a long time and I want to, I want to have a drink. <laughs> take it away. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, so uh, I guess I'm going to look. So also, uh, the... end your turn. Excuse me? End your turn. Oh, sweet, sweet. <laughs> Here I was, yeah. somebody told me PG-13. Yeah. Okay, oh. take it away. Oops. Oops. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, take it away. All right, so uh, the so what is the role of the um, high representative of the, uh, of the EU? 
essentially the, the representative the high representative of the EU is kind of the diplomatic representation of the um, of the European Union. So it's the one uh, engaging with the other governments. Kind of how you would see a foreign affairs minister, although <laughs> it is not the one directly deciding uh, the um, EU uh, foreign policy. As the EU foreign policy is decided by the uh, foreign ministers of all countries. But essentially, it's the, it's the representation. So when the EU is being represented in Russia, it is the high representative that goes to Russia and talk to uh, Sergei Lavrov. Awesome. All right, so... Well, awesome. I, I, on the topic of awesome, that's not really how I describe his yeah. visit to Russia. I, that's fair, to that's the, fair. Uh, I don't know, especially... Um, I don't know, I would say the... <laughs> currently, like, the, 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 the high representative um, of the EU uh, has the unfortunate role of having to represent the EU, but also does not have any uh, tea. negotiating power. Well, the thing is, like, yeah, it doesn't have any tea because he cannot take a uh, decision unilaterally. Yeah. Meaning that every time he goes somewhere and represents yeah. the EU and, yeah, right. and someone kind of bullies the EU and say he, he cannot, like, unilaterally say, like, well, if you're yeah. talking shit about us, we're going to act back. He yeah, can exactly. only say, okay, <laughs> and now. The foreign minister, they Which won't... Very hard position. Foreign minister. They wanted him to be called a foreign minister back in the day when they created the office, but people wouldn't agree with it. Yeah, no? of course, it's uh, that takes away agency from the nationals. Exactly. 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 Yeah. And I think one of, by the way, one of the funniest hot takes I've ever seen on politics actually came from the high representative after right. he went to. So, for context for people, um, the EU sent a diplomatic envoy to Russia, and. Got, got taken to school Not long ago yeah yeah a few weeks ago and Russia, weeks ago. Russia absolutely humiliated us um <laughs> it was ridiculous and then european countries agreed to kind of make the point that we are not bullied by russia they made the they took the effort to actually allow some extra sanctions just to make the point right and then the high representative's office itself went out with a press statement saying that the humiliation of the sta of the for you know of the high representative was a victory because it motivated countries to create sanctions. So he went off on and said, "Look, guys, I'm sorry. I'm you know I'm I'm sorry I messed it all up, and I'm sorry I really embarrassed myself on a world stage and was the laughing stock of the international community. But it really motivated the rest of you guys to fix the problem." <laughs> well, the whole point is like uh... <laughs> this is this was genuinely the, the answer from Borel. This was the this was the, no, the the whole point is like uh, you even if you get humiliated you literally do not have any power or any authority to to reply or to say anything back. Uh, uh, David, how do I join the group chat? I keep seeing it, but I don't know how to answer. You have to press uh, tilde. Press the, yeah. Tilde. All oh, right. Where's the? I know the symbol. I where, where top left it? under escape. I, I just. Uh, uh, Thing, yeah, I don't yeah. know. I have a French keyboard and on mine I have to press like Ah, right, that's the thing. And, oh, and, and, and some is above the tab button from German keyboards, it's above the hashtag button. Wait, tab, hash... What? Tilde. Wait, is this... Critic. Well, yeah, Robin, I'm game with invading Egypt. Yes, me it's... too. Like, it's it's high time, you know? It's uh, It's a yeah. problem. And right. Everybody's okay. just waiting um, for the revolution um, in China. Yes. All right. So, um, moving okay, back to another, to moving back, back to this topic. Okay, yeah. Two seconds. Let's talk the game for two seconds. Okay. I have two soldiers right by by Memphis, so I'm just gonna walk in. Okay. All right. Go for I it. I doubt this is sufficient. But no, good luck, guys. No. No, that's fine. I'm just banking on you guys making all the sacrifices. I am right next oh, to perfect. you. Oh, perfect. That's so good. I hope you're not attacking with spearmen. Or something like that. Uh, one spearman, one archer. I think it is like. Okay, archer is good. Never do. No, but uh, no, but uh, I have a warrior and a spearman. So let, maybe let's talk about the game for one minute. What is our long-term strategy here besides attacking Egypt? Surviving. <laughs> well, so on the Eurasian African continent, which are connected uh, through Egypt, um, we have only one AI, and then three more on the American continent. Canada, USA, and Argentina. So we need to hurry up our research a little bit, and in the Middle Ages, we can 
uh, travel more easily uh, to the American continent. But until that, we have to um, properly yeah. settle the Eurasia and Africa. And I think Egypt is just in the way, right? I yep. think so too. So also, um, uh, welcome. Uh, thank you, Panico98, and love back to Italy. Awesome. Thank you for joining the stream. Uh, nice to have you here. We are Volt Europe, and we are playing Civ 3 with Joel. And Joel is a board member of uh, Volt Europe, and we are talking about foreign affairs. So let's maybe, let's maybe do a round table rather than again, because people might have joined since the start. Hi, my name is Joel. I am based in Sweden, sending right by the border to Denmark in Lund. Uh, board member of Volt Europa, doing foreign policy a lot, and um, master, master of foreign political shit takes. And okay, uh, <laughs> let's do a round table. I'm passing the word. Robin, Mike, David. In, David, in that order. Robin, take it away. Who are you and why are you here? Who am I? That's a good question. Uh, so <laughs> I am really the uh, communications manager at uh, Old Europe. Uh, I actually studied um, international relations and uh, crisis management and for some reason ended up in communication. Oh, uh, actually, you're kidding, but I was working uh, on the... Um, uh, at the, uh, the 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 spokesperson service uh, in the Borwell uh, team. <laughs> so uh, yeah, so actually, when you're saying like the the the, the Borwell's unit uh, wrote the press statement, I actually know who wrote that press statement. <laughs> really, that's cool. Yeah, but it's a golden one. It's the best spin I've seen in in years. It's the most ballsy statement I've seen. Yeah, we failed. We got you guys to fix it. See, it was a success. I love it. I absolutely love it. Whoever came up with that idea needs to get a pay raise. And, and that promote would mostly be Peter Stano and he's absolutely uh, freaking gold. He's well, a spokesperson for uh, foreign affairs and he's amazing. Now officially endorsing on, on live stream single civil servants. <laughs> I mean, that's the way to go, right? <laughs> How do I... By the way, Dave, David, David, sorry. Um, yes. How do I? What's the prerequisite for me to irrigate this groundwork, land? Well, first of all, you don't want to do it on grassland because uh, in, under despotism, you only reach a maximum of, or well, there's a penalty of minus one food per tile anyway. You want to do it on floodplain, deserts, and plains. You cannot do it on hills and mountains. Right. Um, so I'll get over. There. Some tiles, uh, you have forest. You have to get rid of the forest first if you want to do irrigations. But um, you have enough tiles where you can just proceed without having to cut down the forest. All right. And well, citizens, hang and then one run away. And uh, you, your citizens are only working at a distance of maximum two tiles away from your city yeah. center. Yeah, that's so fine. You... That's fine. I, I have one tile, but I was on a grasslands tile, so I, I sorry on a forest tile, so I would have had yeah, to. Yeah, on uh, on, um, on grassland you better build mines. On yep. fl flood plains, deserts, and plains you build irrigations. And as mm -hmm. soon as you have any other government style than despotism, which would soon be republic or monarchy or uh, feudalism, you can also irrigate grassland if you're really into a heavy population boom. Well, I believe you are considering your. Uh... Well, fair enough. That uh, that look... would be a real Chinese thing, indeed. <laughs> but keep in mind that it's capped by. Well, if you don't have a river, sweet water, or lake, um, there's a cap of six citizens. Um, so keep that in mind, and you have to keep them happy. So if you don't have enough military or luxury uh, goods, then they'll become unhappy and. Um, no production is happening. Oh. Yeah, that'd be sad. And then Ooh. you can't produce any military units against Egypt. Okay, so... Very sad. Okay, so I don't know who this leader is supposed to be, but the pharaoh is really, really sad. Yeah. Do I, mean, I want to declare... Do we want yeah, to declare... Yeah, sad. Do we want to clear... So I have soldiers on... I have soldiers on... Um, on Cleopatra Stop. looks like kind of a... a... Yeah. I... Uh, yeah, right? Yes. <laughs> you want to go for it? Okay, uh, guys, are you guys ready for war? Because we are I'm ready for to... war. Okay. That's I good. wish you, I I wish you luck. War. war. Yes. Off we go. Let's destroy them, sir. Yes, you're right. They are scum. They are indeed. 
You are attacking Memphis, or what's happening? Yes. I am indeed attacking Memphis. We are walking in uh, Memphis. Mike, uh, how many units do you have to attack? I have Wait, uh, two archers right here. Well, yes. I, I might have gotten my ass kicked right now. Okay, let's see. Whoop. Try to let the archers attack first. Yeah. I should jump. That. That, was a good, that, why, was, that was a good plan. Why Thank can't I attack? Time. You need to walk onto them. You just need to say, just walk yeah, yeah. to destination, click on Memphis. I thought, like, I mean, I am, but I'm not. Interesting. Yeah, don't attack with your worker. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, not with the Russians. No, I don't want to start war with the oh, Russians. I got my ass kicked, like, really bad. Chrome accidentally invaded Russia. Yeah, no, what? I didn't. <laughs> uh, let's say prepare for war. Yes, let us destroy them. You're right, they are scum. Wow, that's amazing. Um, Civ 3, that's it. Yes, we are playing Civ 3 tonight. That's it. Uh, at the same time, it is a very interesting thing because it involves geopolitics. Ooh. And what would be the topic of tonight's debates? And tonight's debate is, my goodness, my brain is not here. Uh, my uh, tonight's debate is foreign affairs. So, what would Europe be? Uh, should it be in regards to foreign affairs? Should we be a uh, a carnivore, a herbivore? Keep being a herbivore, as Joel so aptly described before. Or should we become an omnivore who can at least, which can at least choose what it wants to eat? So, do we show our teeth? Do we carry around with a big stick but talk softly? Um, it is these predicaments that we're cho choosing and uh, discussing. Is a uh, carnivore, herbivore, omnivore kind of like a metaphor for um, hard power, soft power, smart power? <laughs> yes. I would, yeah. I would say so, definitely. And you can also make a point out of it saying that um, soft power relates more to uh, trade, whereas um, hard, hard power and being a carnivore relates to more like military uh, prowess. Yeah, or at least the ability. And, and I, I, like, I think hard power is mainly ec like hard economic sanctions and military. Yes. That's usually hard power. Where soft power is usually diplomacy and the power of friendship and care bears. And, <laughs> and Europe yeah, is really good at being a boombie bear, whatever they call it in English. Um, oh, you, know I like that. I, you know what I mean, right? I, I, yeah, just, yeah. I, I don't know the, uh, the English word for them. Ooh, really. uh, can you say it again? Just so I. Wait. No, let me check it out. I'm just going to Google it. Uh, bear. Uh, the, the bear. Pop out. They're not called the gummy bears. Just a gummy bear, bear, right? Bear. Yeah. Yes. So if I might intervene here real quick and... Uh, yes, we are losing Robin desperately. Maybe Russia would want to uh, defend Moscow. There's a whole... There's a whole... Yeah, I see you. I see you. No, uh, Moscow, Moscow has... Uh... It's not, not defended at all, but... Uh... The hottest of political takes. Maybe defend your capital. Also, yeah, that, the Antos is posing the diff most difficult question. Uh, Draco already answered it, but it is important to uh, to discern this. Uh, what is Volt's stance on an uh, a pineapple on top of pizza? Oh, well, okay. That is that is a question I can take this... because that was a very long debated question in the comms team. Well, I mean, you, you do, whatever you, you say. <laughs> Robin, do you realize how many votes we will lose if you take your personal stance? Party over person. Party over person. But it's the official vote party. Uh, show, me, show me the, the policy portfolio. <laughs> and also, are we going to let national, uh, national stances on this really influence our European position on this? I Wait, think this matter should be decided by Volt Italia. It is just making us electable in the country of Italy. <laughs> We have an Italian comms lead uh, who would. Uh, yes, and I think she is listening. Disagree. She is listening, probably. So if we say this, we will be um, well gutted, to put it mildly. 
as the resident Swede with with all of our horrific pizza creations, I apologize for my country. Um, I'm a European at heart. I disavow my mother nation. We cannot make pizza. Ah, there she is. Robin should we have, threat lightly. We have Jen in the chat. Yes, we have Jen in the chat. And, um... <laughs> I'm curious about what other Volters are there. If there's anybody I, we know by name, I, I'm th I'm sure there are, but I'm, I'm curious um, because I can't see the chat. Um, yes. By the way, by the way, Gandalf, uh, could you please finish your turn because we I need to get our ass. I am sorry. Yes. Uh, yeah, I have finished my turn. Apologies. Uh, maybe give us an update regarding the front situation. Uh, oh, you don't want to know. No, 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 no. This is intentionally kept quiet because we don't want to lose face in uh, in front of our viewers because <laughs> it matters. I figured. I yeah, figured. It's, it's, it's exactly like uh, China not discussing the Uyghur situation. No. <laughs> to keep face. Absolutely not. Um, also, my treasury is bleeding. Something, something joke about communist countries, but, you know... My army is currently disbanding. <laughs> uh, yes, it yeah, is not yeah, going great. Same. Maybe we should make peace and um, lick our wounds and make sure that we uh, come back a bit better prepared. Like have a unified European... Uh, oh, gaming channel maybe on this maybe have a European uh, army, you know? That's the thing. Well, you know, this isn't really an indictment of European armies. This is well, more an indictment of me being a terrible player. I mean, I am literally building a European army right here. I could use your help, Russia, and I could use your help, China. <laughs> I am getting whooped by, by Egypt. <laughs> what you need is, like, at least five uh, units, uh, offensive units, not spearmen or warriors, attacking in the same turn. Don't, like, China right. attacking first and then one turn later Rome because in the meantime uh, Egypt heals their units because they yes. are fortified. Oh! Who of you just destroyed Memphis? Oh, what? look at that! I just... Who did that? Who? I, I guess that, that was me. Like you dropped the bomb there. I but... guess that was me. Good job, Robin. Oh. You have destructive powers you don't even know about. You are a powerhouse. So, for, the, for those of you who... Banana. That being said, uh, David, I just destroyed Memphis by doing exactly what you told us not to do with a spearman. <laughs> <laughs> For those okay. of you who are following Vault Internal Politics, this is a warning. Do not mess with the comms team. Wow. Yes. <laughs> I, I can sign that statement. Oh, yes. Nice. Oh, more or less all of us coming from the communications Ooh, division. We have, um, a, okay. we have a very hot take here in the chat. What was the vote policy regarding pineapple on pizza? My vote will depend on the, will depend on this. All right. So then the question is, uh, to to the to the brilliant person asking the question, where are you from? Yes. Where are you from, Marlin C? And Please Jennifer, uh, you're waiting for China. Ah, here we go. Jen AT, I would like you to keep your ears closed while we discuss uh, politics on this no, matter, no, no, just no, no, to be no. sure. Oh, I don't know if this person is from a country that serves pineapple pizza or not, because I'm a politician and I have absolutely zero shame. Netherlands. Netherlands. <laughs> Oh, then it's fine. Okay, hello, my fellow Dutchman, who likes onions on everything and garlic as well. You can answer in Dutch. Jennifer won't understand you. <laughs> nou ja, we houden heel erg van uh, um, van van alles. No, but uh, um... <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is great. Um, okay. Uh... I'm thinking like. I do, uh, in any case, pineapple will never belong on pizza because uh, Italy has a uh, veto right in the council. <laughs> <laughs> See? <laughs> no, 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 you, you're ruining my entire line of argumentation. By the way, co again, coming from the country of terrible pizzas, um, I have tasted atrocity. I have tasted war crimes. There are things that you serve at my local pizza joint like 100 meters down the road that should end you up in the Hague for war crimes. Um, Zulu's wishes ever. By the way, um, Shaka Zulu, uh, could you please hand me money? I'll give you money mathematics. Money depends. Okay, mathematics is nice. I, I can give you 50 gold. And... Yes, because my, my treasury is currently zero. Yeah, I am oh, also... Uh, unfortunate. It's also not going Control great your me. budget via your um, domestic advisor, F1, and yeah. click the minus button until you're in the plus, so to say. Yeah. 
Income six, expenses six. Okay, no science. We hate science. We hate progress. <laughs> we rule by mandate of heaven. Maybe you okay. have a military problem, Joel. Press F3 to check your military advisor and you see how much you spent on your army. I, I love this. My own personal German Jarvis. This is really cool. <laughs> So Me. I would recommend that your amount of total units is below the one of allowed units. You boost that by switching your government away from despotism or by building more cities. Ooh, build well, more you know, cities. Well, I have two cities because I cannot. You have this. two. That yes. is not advisable, Joel. Well, you know, I have been trying for the last half hour to get Shanghai to finish building a settler. I mean, you can also rush by right-clicking on the city and then uh, sacrificing a uh, citizen. Yeah, but the problem is for workers and settlers, you need more inhabitants. And uh, that's true. He didn't build enough irrigations for that, I'm afraid. Mm, you need well, to build. I'm... You need to build additional pylons. You know. Yeah. Well. Um, yeah. Yeah. Well, that's about as good as it doing because currently I might as well be playing StarCraft. Oof. Russia. Yeah. Robin, I can you contact me if you have any really text? Early. I think I said this really early in the ch um, in the stream. Um, I when when people were like, "Yeah, what are we gonna play?" Okay, let's play Civilization Three. I, I jumped on the sh on the chance and said, "Yeah, I've played this game as a kid. Let's let's do this." And then I realized as I booted the game, "Oh yeah, no, I played Civilization Two when that was a thing." So now I am learning this game all over from start. I mean, that's okay. I mean, I, I am genuinely half of the time I don't know what I'm doing. It's a, it's a scary thought, scary feeling, you know, don't recommend it. At the same time, uh, happy to be in this boat with all of you. I'm having a great time. So uh, thank you. It's lovely because because it's your screen that's being streamed. So I do not have to answer for the fact that China is totally terrible. I mean, just just build your settlers in a capital. Don't build them in Shanghai, but in Beijing. I all mean, right, this well, is, they... it is going great, you know. Uh, we do we do have a military <laughs> problem. Pyramids. Robin, your bag. Do you have any technologies for me? All right, well. Uh, do I have any technologies for you? How do I know if I have technologies for you? I'm going to check. Well, uh, you can contact me and um, see what yeah, stuff indeed. you have. USA. Yeah. Oh, the USA is. USA. Hey, USA is offering me money. That's always No, good. they're not offering me money. They're they just, want money. Uh, yeah, I they, deny they this money. to them. I deny this to them and I am at war with the US. Typical. <laughs> I say not a chance. I'm sorry, dude. Satire writes itself, guys. Satire writes itself. Uh, yeah. I cannot uh, afford that. Sorry. Bye. By the way, um, is somebody because I currently I, I, I see the ho horrible destruction and the ruins of men. Uh, probably I do not have any any sense for you. Sorry. Oh, that's sad. Like so maybe quick check who is researching what. Oh yeah. F6, right? Uh, I am... I don't even know what I'm doing. I am not doing great in terms of science, I think. I am uh, mathematics. It... Almost there, too. I am creating construction. I am researching construction, but because I, oh, am, no, I have... Math -making. I have Boy, a... that's, that's wild. Okay. I have about a... Joel... Of 50%. Joel, how about you make currency instead? Is that to China, I'm giving Rome mathematics for free. Yeah, cool. I uh, what is your menu for that? Currency. Yeah. And um, then mathematics. I have polytheism oh. I do, uh, as well, by the way. I'll uh, trade this oh, with you. Oh, yeah, then please. Robin and yes, that's... David, can you wrap up your turns? What? Absolutely. Also, no. I am going to go to the diplomacy and here is china i'm going to give you some tech but we are kind of forgetting about russia so russia uh are you able to research literature rome. maybe who's rome literature I am no rome. definitely yeah. i don't even have writing well, i am going going to give you mysticism philosophy and horseback riding Ooh, is there any? You want. Do you have some tech yourself that you might be I able to give? give some money. Sorry. I can, no, I don't. But I can give you some money. No, this is fine. We need that to work together. Be just my money, so. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 
Uh, Russia, just press accept. I'm gifting you alphabet. Oh, that is very nice. Also, yes. Russia. Oh, Russia. Master so, Russia is busy conducting talks with another. Perhaps we should try uh, again later. Yeah. It'll Russia get... was in talks with South Africa. Wow. Look at that. And then Russia can research literature or code of laws. Preferably code of... No, I don't know. But I'm doing construction because I can invest some more money in that. Quick check. Um, it, I, do I need to clear wetlands? I need to clear wetlands if I want to... Um... Is, that as, is that as recommendable because they cause disease in your cities? Ooh. That is not good. That... I don't like disease, you know? Oh, that's that's strong, strong foreign policy here for you. Disease is not good. Uh, no. Jungle can cause the same, and um, same with wet or uh, floodplains. But we can't do anything against floodplains until uh, the industrial age. So, good luck with Beijing. <laughs> yeah, it, it's right in the middle of one, I think. Yeah, it is. Or bordering uh, one. But uh, they give well, um, extra it, food, it, so it, that's cool. Um, it's Mike left. Yeah, I'm uh, almost done. Give me a second. I need to fortify this one. And I oh, so many points. Well. Huh? I have six cities. And the well, Egyptians just you, built the Oracle. The game. I just built cities and workers and make... Yeah, hope, that's the way. Hope for the best that I don't die. When, well, when, when is... Uh... When there's cattle on the map, like how do you, what do you, what is recommended to do? Um, depends on the tile, mm. but it usually gives you or gives you extra food. So I usually build uh, mines on them to get extra yeah. my uh, extra shields out of that, which means higher production. Also, so uh, Amtos asking, what's that big island next to Ireland? That must be Greenland. Um, okay, so. Getting back to uh, how we are going to try and take over the world. I have been watching uh, the reboot of uh, the Looney Tunes. So I have been seeing Pinky in the Brain again. And that made me weep out of joy. I don't know about you, but that was some youth nostalgia right there. It was beautiful. Have you seen it? No. I have not. You haven't? It's I amazing. Have not. Have you seen like have you seen the uh, uh, Pinky or uh, Sardi Looney Tunes before? Like when you were young? Oh, I know it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know I know it. Of... yeah. Maybe you did. Um... <laughs> and toast. I mean, the British island, Little England. Apparently, it's called British Isles. I thought British people were a fictional race in Lord of the Rings. I mean, they are pretty mythical, you know. Um, it's been a couple of years since I last uh, uh, seen them in the mainland. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Well, you know, th this is the point where we don't want Vault UK to break off from us because we're actually running for elections there. Yes, and they are doing amazing. They're actually, really yeah, doing they're doing work. amazing. They're, they're really doing a great really, job. Really good and job. I'm, I'm so impressed by all their efforts. And actually, if you didn't, uh, the Voltica is running for elections in London, and uh, just uh, today we got also the announcement that uh, Volt Portugal is running for the mayor of Lisbon. Yes. Really? With yeah. Good friend of mine. Uh, knew him before Volt, actually. Uh, seems like I'm flexing, but I'm not. He's a great guy. Uh, he really is. Uh, we, were, we are... So for those of you who don't know, Volt is actually running right now in a couple of countries. We're running in regional elections in Germany. We're going to run for uh, national elections in Germany for the Bundestag. We are running for national elections in the Netherlands and in Bulgaria. And we are polling over the threshold. We are going to get in if the elections were today in both countries. And we're yes. climbing in the polls. We are the polls actually both. getting in the Netherlands. It really looks like we are getting not just one, uh, one seat in the parliament out of 150. We might be inclined to get two or three even. And it is looking really amazing in the Netherlands, at least. I don't know about the other uh, country at the moment. I'm very invested in this one, of course. <laughs> um, and it's so vibrant to see. You see the amount of members increasing. It's uh, so special to see how uh, everything's coming together all of these years. You know, actually, a very, very interesting thing is that um, obviously before uh, before joining Vault, when it was uh, election in the Netherlands, I would like 
somehow kind of you know follow it a bit from the background kind of thing like okay what's happening there just seeing like okay who would win thing and now uh that's uh uh, like being part of all i'm so involved actually in, in the elections in netherlands in london uh in uh in lisbon like not involved personally like working on it but just involved emotionally thinking like oh, it's, it's actually a huge deal i'm learning so much about the, the dutch political scene uh yeah. just because of that. and that's super important i think uh i think david maybe you can corroborate this i think you were at the general assembly right in um in uh sofia yeah and I think you, yes. the two of us, Mike, were you in Sofia? No, I wasn't. I was uh, only a member at 2019, actually. Oh, uh, 20, uh, sorry. Yeah, yeah, all right, cool. Oh, no, so yes. I think it was this weird thing. And I remember, I remember it being so weird. So I was in a taxi. In, so in Sofia, Bulgaria, we were running in local elections at the time, right? And, I would, and we had our general assembly there. So I had the big party congress, and it was a really big thing. And uh, the board was going to be elected. It was uh, like hundreds of people there. It was really massive. It was really cool. And... And I remember I'm 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 in a taxi me, which is like the, the Bulgarian version of Uber. And I drive I, we're on the highway and we go over this massive billboard and I just see Nastimir Ananiev vault Bulgaria. European cool. party vault. You know? And it's it's this weird feeling when when you drive that and then you get off the taxi and and you you know there's you know there's always there's politicians and activists all over the streets. And they're handing you leaflets, right, as you go past them. And then they see, oh, well, this is clearly a tourist, so they kind of reach out for you to give the, to, you know, to, to give the paper. But then they kind of stop themselves, right, because they realize that um, because you, they should be giving you one. There's a waste of time because you can't vote. But you can answer them, like actually answer them with a straight failure. No, European uh, Party vault, European Party vault, yeah. right? And there's the utter confusion on their face. <laughs> with some poor, some poor sod from the some Bulgarian party just like wants to apologize for trying to like force party propaganda on you and you can genuinely tell them no 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 I, I'm sorry you're right I am from the other side of the continent but as you would have it I'm actually here for your elections and you're wrong <laughs> it's just the weirdest feeling like you're you're hundreds upon hundreds of miles from home and you can still come out. It's something beautiful about that. I don't know. It, it, it got under my skin. That is really cool. And it's just, you can be shouting at the biggest stake in the municipal elections in Sofia, you know? And you know their issues by heart because, you know, you, you know them. It's, uh, it's corruption. It's air pollution. It's, uh, we're going to approach that of parliament. We know exactly what we're doing. You know, and everybody, like, you, you're from like 20 countries plus there, yeah. you know? We had from like 25 countries, we were almost from all of the European Union represented. Like, Bolt is in all the European Union countries and more, but you know, you know what I mean. Well, stop bullying me, David. I'm learning the game. <laughs> Sorry, just too much fun looking at China. So much space there. I'm making a political statement. Don't judge me. It is going okay. great. You are doing, your, your political statement is doing really well. This is performance art. I am a performance artist and I will not be judged. Art is in the eye of the beholder and uh, I am a, I'm a user. I, I think Russia has something against you now. <laughs> I mean, I am uh, three points above you. For some reason, I've started building the pyramid, the great pyramids in Beijing. And that is I'm not too wise because that's going to take like... No, no, I have 10 you. I'm succeeding, so I'm just holding out to build the damn pyramid because I noticed it so late that I'm actually close to winning. Oh my goodness! Oh my, I'm that, that you, explains a lot. Well, you know, there's something about I, I don't know if I mentioned this to you, but I actually don't know how to play this game. Really? I just. But it's going so well. You played, yeah, you played Civ two. You know, I might not be able to play this game, but I am able to expel you. <laughs> <laughs> and with that said, I'm going to drop the mic, head off screen, be back in a moment. No, Much don't love. drop me. I love making that pun. I'm so sorry. I'll be back in a moment. All right. Uh, be right back. <laughs> Keep it going. Uh, ha. Now it clicked. Ha, oh, ha, ha. nice. <laughs> okay, so while Joel's away, Cheers. let's invite China real quick. I heard that. <laughs> oh, damn. Oh, damn. No, I think he has to still pass the turns. Damn it. Russia, you're close to China. Oh, wait, you're tiny too. Huh. 
Oh, well, I mean, at this point in time, it's, am, it's only 1720, it's only 1725 BC, you know, we have some time to expand. We have like three more millennia or four more millennia to uh, build. Also, oh my. Vienna's burning hard. Vienna uh, is burning. Yes. I, I, I don't like that. I made, I made some more happy, smiley people, like shiny, happy people. Yeah, that's my good. I'm still at war with Egypt. I forgot about that. <laughs> oh, I'm slowly expanding towards Egypt. Closest city is now Alexandria, which is somewhere in Ethiopia. Interesting. I'm, I'm somewhere in Kenya or Tanzania. I, I'm not sure. But I only have five cities so far. Rome probably has more. I have six and I am on my way to seven. Right. And Egypt has five as well. They just built Timbuktu in the middle of the Sahara Desert. Nice. No, okay, not so nice. It's way too close to me. Nothing at all. So, yeah, Probably. Robin and Joel should build way more settlers. Just use your capital to spam out all the settlers every few mm. turns. You'd expand so quickly. Yeah, sorry, uh, and toast. Berlin and the Balkans, Vienna and Northern Germany, and Brussels and Ukraine. I, I do have to say um, I like mixing it up a bit. Maybe uh, uh, maybe geopolitics becomes a bit more uh, well, a bit different like this. You know what what would happen if uh, Berlin is in the Balkans? You know that's uh, food for thought. Food for thought. Oh, indeed. I saw a wonderful thread on Reddit yesterday about how you what would happen in an alternative universe if Yugoslavia and Germany switched their history. <sighs> And like Yugoslavia would be reunited now, and Germany split up, and all the states. And oh, you have that beautiful that scenario alternate that would be just right there. Interesting. <laughs> Very fascinating maps on Reddit. Mm. So yeah, we we just emphasized again, Joel, while mm. you were away, how you need more settlers. Yeah, well, you know what I have, almost pyramids. Nice. That's that totally how a settler looks like. <laughs> No, but pyramids are actually useful for you because yeah, um, they, are. they put, uh, um, how are they called, uh, granaries in all your cities on the same continent. That basically doubles your food production, which makes it easier to build workers and settlers. But then if you don't have a lot of cities. Yeah, that's that's kind of counterproductive indeed. Um, happy and accept. Here. Thank more, you. More tech. Did any of you guys finish any technologies recently? Let's no. see. I have finished. I'm still researching the map code making, of flow. and I am now researching uh, construction. Oh, which I shouldn't. I should finish code of law, I guess. Yes, I, I'm good. finishing code of law. No, I don't do oh. rule of law. I'm sorry. I'm China. <laughs> China. What What are you doing? Does it look like I can answer that question? No, like, like, what are you researching? You see that in the lower right. Yeah, well, <clears throat> let's see. Um, domestic, trade, foreign, cultural, science, science. That's, I like science. Um, 31 turns until I have researched currency. Okay, I, I think we have to ignore China for some centuries now. Um, <laughs> so, how about I finish, <laughs> I finish construction. It's done in three turns. We need someone who does currency. I will do that. Awesome. And uh, Russia is on code of laws. Age of Empires or something. Something I actually know how to play. Okay. I. Oh, next I told time you, we will. Might a magic. Then I'll actually. Ooh, work. But if Joel, much... I would love to do this at one point with you. I, I am definitely game. Let's set this up uh, really fast and really soon. As if well. You're using too much money, Joel. Maybe disband some of your military units. But... Oh. Well, it depends. Check your military advisor. If you're above the cap, then uh, yeah. I don't think I am anymore. The thing is, actually, I think the point isn't money. The issue is that I in, I, I pull down science funding to, to build up a treasury. Yeah. And keep in mind, I with every new science, city, you yeah. get more money. Uh, repeat that, please. Of us? <laughs> David first. Uh, with every city, you 
get a regular income of more money per turn. So you're more, the more yeah, things you have, the more I'm money. I'm building the pyramids. Um, I'm, right. I'm, I'm, I need, I'm, I'm below. I'm five out of eight units um, because I'm really small. Uh, but I'm going to up my science for a bit. Cool. I'm still below my expenditure. Uh, well, I'm, I'm still within. I'm still, you know, within budget for my expenditure. Considering that we are at the end of antiquity and we can finish the technology without China's help, you can actually put your research to zero and save some money until we are in the Middle Ages. Well, then I will do that. Watch me save money. Progress. Yes. Progress is a capitalist idea. Ooh. Progress. Is a, pro progress is a Western conspiracy. I refuse. Also, we haven't finished our round table yet. We had Robin. We had. Uh... Oh, you did. Sorry. Yeah. Um... Oh, that's quite all right. It's interesting though because I would like to finish it. It's. Uh, uh, how about we do? Uh, we have uh, Draco next. All righty. Uh, yeah. I'm Draco. I am based in Berlin. I also studied international relations. What a coincidence. <laughs> Um, I'm also the happy owner of two cats um, that are always watching me when I'm playing stuff like Civilizations. And um, yeah, I'm the social media manager on the European level of Fort Europa since January 2018. Cat. That's uh, my story. Cat, I have, her, I have her for two seconds. Cats. Hey. Hey, if this... Ow, ow, ow. <laughs> Okay. Ow. It's our <laughs> lovely cat goddess. Yes, that is Ishtar, the cat goddess, and she did not want to be on screen. Mm. She changed her mind uh, really fast. She's a righteous. Know, she's a righteous please bring cat. us on screen. What? I was gonna say, could you please bring her on screen? Well, now yeah. she's good. now she's out of reach. Mm. She came up in order to be pet. I figured I'd bring her on screen, and she, then she she has smitten, smitten you or smooth. What's the word? What's the past tense? Smitten. Smitten? Smite? Yeah, Smooth? Snape? <laughs> Smoothie. <laughs> Smoothie. <laughs> Euro English truly has taken a deep down yes. to the south of the Brexit. <laughs> sorry, David, I interrupted you um, because I just had a chance. I'm sorry, you are the proud owner of two cats. Right. Yeah, Lucifer and Johnny, very adorable uh, kittens, younger than one year, turning one year soon, actually. Um, not much more to say except for that I'm yeah, also doing social media as my job basically, kind of working uh, for a government. And yeah, that's that's me. I also was yeah in a movement together with Joel and um, Tiago, who's our candidate now for the mayor office in Lisbon before Volt was a thing and um, that's how lots of Volters I think got to know each other and then we were looking for a party to actually get things done so to say and that's working pretty well ever since awesome thank you that's uh that's a nice introduction so we have a lot of cat people here we have a lot of IR people here international relations uh, that's abbreviation and of course we are vote europe the pan-european party playing civilization 3 and basically try to enact a um a glorious european empire uh all throughout the world you know that's also, uh, that's just also to the to the to the, un, to the unnamed high profile voters considering whether to make an account or not yes obviously do um yes. nobody mentioned or forgotten but that person will know who i'm talking to um we want we, we want as many people as possible to say hi. Uh, that makes us feel less alone in life. Yes. Never have to be alone. All right. Um, shall I uh, start mine then? So go for it. All right. Take it away. Mike, who I am. Uh, well, uh, I am Mike. I'm very uh, enigmatic. I live in Amsterdam. Um, I have a cat called Glitter, and I have, surprise, surprise, studied IR and uh, also philosophy and work as a data engineer in a fintech company in Amsterdam right now. 
At the moment, I uh, am active as the data analytics co-lead together with the prolific Sylvia Falone, who is uh, also uh, probably watching. And we try to make sure that uh, the whole of Vault Europe gets the information they need to get. Um, and at the same time, I try to, uh, well, also uh, get this up and running. Uh, I really love doing this Twitch stream, uh, plan to do it every week uh, by the graces of the prolific comms team. And let's see, well, I really want to, uh, uh, yeah, I really have a thing for uh, Vault. Uh, got here by some people flyering next to the station where I live at and was charmed because it is actually the first political party that I wholeheartedly agree with in uh, its organizational structure, which is really fascinating from so many points of view. Um, yeah, I think that's... Really uh, can, I, no members. can I start a interesting debate? Uh, Throw a grenade. If, See what happens. All right, if um, Volt was not a thing, which country would you, which uh, party would you be joining in your, uh, in your country? The well, Greens. I wouldn't go back to my own party if that's what you're asking. Like, is there actually something that you would be interested in joining? I, I, I know what I'd, I know what I'd test about. Um, but let's take me last. Um, I've spoken too much anyway. Um, <laughs> David, uh, let's do David, Mike, Robin, and me in that order. Cool. David, take it away. Right, so before I was involved, I was um, a member of the Social Democratic Party of Germany, where the uh, candidate for the chancellor office um, in the election 2017 was um, a name you might recognize, Martin Schulz, uh, one of our former presidents of the European Parliament. And he motivated quite a considerable amount of people um, to get active in politics uh, in the context of, you know, social democratic policies. Um, but it didn't end well. Uh, <laughs> to summarize that very quickly, um, and the social democrats, um, after the elections in 2017, um, voted in favor of a uh, so-called grand coalition with the Christian Democrats, the conservative conservatives in Germany under the leadership of Angela Merkel once again. And I was not a big fan of that. Um, so I decided to change my party. Um, but if Volt was not a thing now, I'm not sure. Maybe I would still be in the Social Democratic Party maybe i'll be closer to the greens it's um hard to tell really in such a hypothetical scenario the greens are actually pretty pretty big right in germany yeah they are yeah what about you mike um i would uh definitely uh, uh be more involved with the greens and if i actually would have been involved at all so i always wanted to be politically involved um it's just fascinating to me the whole process uh when is it green so that means groenlinks or yeah oh guys uh uh the usa is threatening me and they're asking me for gold yeah, they do that from time to time they declare war on me because they declined i think it's pretty safe to just say no to them and if they declare war it might take 1000 years for them to arrive at your shores yeah. uh, they just declared a war on me yeah nice we're all Russia at war with the America, US. America, the yeah. Good old times. And I just killed a unit. I don't know whose unit I killed, but I killed a unit. Barbarians, it's... maybe? No. I don't know. They just came too close to my borders. Yeah, so I... Uh... Wait, 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 Mike, yeah? No, no, oh, But do you say Hoonlinks or... Hoon... Yeah, Hoonlinks. Uh, if I were to join at all, because uh, ultimately uh, the thing I have against Hoonlinks is that they did not make right with what they... Uh, promise and they disavow some very pragmatic solutions like nuclear energy uh, on the basis of just not wanting to look into it rather than having good arguments against it. Which, uh, you know, that 
the discussion is not completely settled yet for me. Uh, I, I am in favor of uh, uh, looking at nuclear energy as an option to save us from climate change, which I would argue is a uh, higher risk um, overall. But, you know, it's a, it's, it's a fascinating thing to look at, at least. Um, cool. Robin, what about you? Yeah. Uh, well, interestingly, during the, the last uh, elections, I was, uh, well, as presidential elections, at least, I was a bit um, unsure on, on, on where to vote. Uh, and uh, in the end, like, Macron came as a as an interesting candidate because he was kind of the, the more, uh, more European, uh, let's say, uh, European-focused... Uh, candidates and he had some interesting ideas uh although to be fair like today i would really not be sure because i mean the the macron that's um uh, presented himself in the um, presidential elections uh in 2018 i think 2017 uh, um and now it's it's completely a different story uh so right now, I would not be so sure. I, frankly, to to be to to speak uh, entirely freely, um, I'm not so fan of the Greens in France. Um, so I would be left actually with a lot of questions <laughs> at the moment. Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, um, yeah. So to speak plainly, uh, most of the people involved, you know, often say they haven't joined a party before. It's like Mike said, you know, this is the first party with which I resonate. It's the first party I really feel at home with, and the first one I can kind of throw myself with, right? I get a lot of those comments. Yeah, yeah and there's a definitely. lot of those involved, and most people involved haven't been in a party before. None of our founders had been, you know, none of the founding groups have been, and you know, like a lot of people who started Vault Up, and none of them had ever done party politics before. Now I'm the uh, I'm the anomaly. I spent eight years in the Christian Democrats of Sweden before I joined Vault. But I digress. And uh, it was... Hey, eight, well, how eight, old uh, were you when you joined? Well, it's, it, politics in Sweden is like ice skating or riding one of those questions. You need, to, you, need, you, know, you, know, you need to actually join the sport before you can actually you know, write your name. Otherwise, you're old news. I joined when hmm. I was 13. I joined when wow. I was 13. Um, and I got a notification the other day saying like, 10 years ago today, uh, you know, on Facebook, Facebook Memories. Um, and I, I got my first title on the regional level in the Youth of Christian Democrats. It was weird to look back at that. Kind of a, with supportive comments. Uh, status now definitely deleted. But, you know, <laughs> point is, I, I woke up one night before, you know, in the 20, 2018, there were national elections in 2018, the year before the European elections. And I just felt that, you know, I, I couldn't be part of them. They had just taken a veer towards nationalism in a way that I could not get behind. I, I'd grown up, you know, eight years later, you're somebody else at that age. So I, no, I, I just realized that, hey, I, I can't campaign for this. I can't hand out flyers and pretend that I believe this anymore. It doesn't work. So I was kind of lost for a while. And I went to a political conference, actually, in Frankfurt in Germany. So I'm Swedish, for those of you who don't know. Um, David was actually there, um, and a bunch of other people with whom I'm, you know, great friends. And, uh, and I remember Volt was there, and I figured, hell, why not? Let's go and say hi. And uh, two of the people at that meetup are now on with me on the European boards. It's funny how, huh. you know, history works out. Uh, one of them is the co-president, Valérie, and uh, another one is Eileen, uh, another member of the board. Who, uh, who, you know, really barraged me, like trying to get me to join. I'm like, ah, you know, I'm a member of another party. I don't really know. And then I got home and I decided, look, I, I don't believe in the party I'm with. I just can't really, I can't get behind this. I, I just can't campaign for this. So I just, I, you know, I, I wrote to Vault Sweden at the time and said, hey guys, you know, if you want to join, you know, if I want to join, how do I get up ahead on this? So what? I went up and I met up and I was part of the founding assembly and there you kind of go, the rest is history. Um, nice. And uh, if I wanted to vote for another party today, I would probably not vote for the, um, I would probably not vote for the Christian Democrats, but probably, I mean, definitely not. Um, funnily enough, up until last week, I would probably have said that my fallback party was the Liberal Party in Sweden. But yesterday, the Liberal Party of Sweden yeah. announced 
they were perfectly willing to negotiate with the nationalists to get into government. This is because the Swedish parliament is hung and nobody can really get a majority. This is super important. And everybody is um, has decided that it's not really kosher to debate actual politics anymore. You're going to debate the game theory of how many seats you can get in parliament to get a government. You know, because who... Who wants to debate actual issues and who wants to debate actual problems? No, we want to see the pol the leaders of the parties debate the math, the you know the the, the addition game of getting seats in parliament. Yes, I mean, that, who, who, who cares about policy when there's uh, uh, seats to give out, right? Exactly, exactly. So now, without any mentioning of policy, without any mentioning of vision, without any mentioning of a genuine change or ideas, the uh, they had a board voting the Liberal Party, which and they went. Oh yeah, um, we are perfectly willing to negotiate with uh, the nationalist bloc. Uh, we're perfectly willing to switch. So they've currently been supporting the other side, the Social Democrats, right? So now they're switching. I can tell Who's you that? why they're switching. They're switching because they want to get the, the Christian Democrats and the moderate, the Conservative Party, they want to get their support of votes to stay in Parliament because they're currently polling under the threshold. So uh... obviously you switch sides to try to get the other side to help you to stay alive. And it, there's just something so brutally cynical about it that I just cannot vote for them anymore i don't know i don't know where i'd be without no up until that point i would probably have said the liberals now i don't know i genuinely have no clue that sounds like a great deal of fun uh all around oh oh, oh no no ah, sorry no oh. i i i clicked the wrong thing i clicked the wrong thing i clicked the wrong thing sorry i i i want i want that po I want, ah, sorry you know what i have very soon you know what i have very soon what we have? I have the pyramids! Yeah, have the Congratulations, pyramids. nice one! No, no, wait. They have... Because Beijing can no longer work the pyramids, the pyramids traditionally just switched to the Temple of Artemis. What? What is The Canadians were quicker. What is this queue? Um, let me see. What? Let me just build something. A settler. I want a settler. Yes, I yeah. don't want... I don't <laughs> want to build the Temple of Artemis. Oh, God. This game. Settler, what, what a good idea. China. I was I'm going to uh, trade with you, China. Rome. Who's Rome? There we go. Yes, that's me. I am going to give you currency, right. code of law, and construction. I'm going to give you the ways of my people. The ways of your people are, are capitalist, and I refuse them. Okay. Um, no, I take me. Deny please, me please, that. Please, <laughs> please, please give me prosperity. Also, I got a question in chat, though not in the chat, but in, in private chat. How many are watching? That's a good question. I see 10 viewers at the moment. I uh, see 12. 12. 12? Yeah. Right. Um, yeah. What's the peak? What's been the peak for the What's been the peak for the evening? Do you know that? Maybe 18 to 20. I think we're uh, having too little action on the map. I think we're so too. Slow. <laughs> I think uh, I guess we should, we should play a bit faster, right? Yes. Yeah. At the same time, I think uh, um, some Age of Empires or uh, a bit of a uh, yeah might also be a nice one for another time. Uh, but it's a good game. I like it. It's very. Uh, it, it also enables us to talk a bit more about actual content because we don't need to focus as much on uh, uh, the map all the time. Yeah. The yeah. prude side of turn-based strategy. Okay, if there's yes. not a lot of of um of viewers, I, I just want to 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 mention uh, to come back kind of on, on foreign policy. Yes. It's uh, something that I've always kind of um, kind of liked about um the the policy. It's not like properly foreign policy. Oh my god, what is that little army coming to my border? Sorry, I went back to the games for a second, but there's like kind of an army of vandals coming to my border. Oh no. Like it's really bad. Like is it finally ten, happening? Happens. Is it the Bronze Age? <laughs> it's the Bronze Age collapse. It is finally yeah, happening. Is bad. <laughs> um, That's happening when an era ends and more than two players join a new era. We have now entered the Middle Ages and that triggers huge armies of barbarians everywhere. So really? That's cool. I didn't know that. That's really cool, actually. Um. Anyway, uh, what was I saying? Uh. Yeah. There's actually one thing that's got me. Um. The 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 one thing that got me like so interested into the the EU uh, foreign policy debates. Um. I was um. 
I started uh, reading that uh, article about um, the, the EU peacekeeping operations in uh, Somalia. Um, yeah. yeah, so it was uh, basically an EU operation uh, that was supposed to um, monitor piracy activity on the coast of Somalia. Right? So to allow, um, basically to allow the um, tankers to reach Europe and not be village uh, on the way. And what I found super interesting is that there was um, actual military uh, boats uh, deployed there uh, to fight off the pirates, kind of uh, helped decrease piracy level, but never really stopped it. And the way actually they started to really stop uh, the, um, the activities was by monitoring the tuna population and allowing a sustainable... Um, Sustainable activity uh, for for fishers, and basically a lot of uh, people who were pirates um, kind of had an opportunity to be something else than pirates by, by becoming fishermen because I actually had tuna, um, and I felt like that is a I don't know if that is you know kind of the defining factor of how the EU is doing its its foreign uh, operation. It's it's really an example for a lot of of uh, of countries that's really fascinating that's a really nice one because um the eu is not we don't have the best track record uh dealing with these kinds of problems right uh the european borders and african uh, uh a lot of african people uh suffer due to our uh farmer tax taxation for example which also has been uh, a contributing factor probably for radicalization uh, and stuff like that. So this is a very fascinating take. I, I'm, I'm dying to hear what your thoughts on this are, Joel. What exactly? Sorry. So the... Um... Actually, focus on the game for two seconds. <laughs> Oof. Uh, yeah. So... Um, Robin stated uh, that mm -hmm. monitoring the tuna population um, yeah. made sure that people in the, the, the piracy stopped due to the fact that they are now uh, they can have a livable they can live a life catching tuna rather than doing piracy and yeah. I wanted to relate that to Europe's bloody borders and the farmer subsidies, which is also a contributing factor to people living in a more destitute uh, situation in the South, uh, well, in Africa, and also can be uh, assessed as a reason, a reason, not the reason, for radicalization in some areas. Uh, the farmer subsidies. Um, yes. You know. You know, you might want to give the audience a bit of a breakdown of that first, because otherwise, I that's think fair. the well, let's I start with let's start with the tuna uh, anecdote then, right? That's uh, uh, that's as a way that Europe can uh, deal with foreign affairs. I think I think this is one of those cases with when it comes to the tuna population. I think it comes, you know, it, it is an example of what we call soft power, right? It's it's not about threat. Is it? I mean, it's not about culture either. Well, it's weird. It's a mixture, right? In that case. I think it's it has to do with... Uh... Sorry. It's certainly not... Ahead. No, I'm just going to say, it's certainly not regular hardline diplomacy. Exactly. Yeah. So, it's certainly something very... Like, there's something quintessentially European about the fact that you can end piracy by, 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 by you know, fish, fishing quotas, you know? Uh, there's, there's something beautifully European about it. I don't know what you think, Robin, but you're the Eurocrat. It's exactly like, I mean, um, apparently that's that's just the anecdote that kind of uh, got me into, like, really interested into the, the that uh, foreign, uh, foreign policy uh, idea that there's something beautifully European about it. Um, and I'm not sure any, any uh, member state would actually take the risk to to try something like that. So, for example, like if you take the, uh, the French, the French army is heavily involved in uh, in uh, Sahel and in, uh, in Niger. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Honestly, I, I, I cannot, uh, I never had, have done any research on, on, on that. So, so obviously this is literally probably just a educated guess and not at all based on anything. But instead of, uh, of uh, spending like so much money on, uh, on military operations to keep like Boko Haram in check in, uh, in Niger or, or in the Sahel region, isn't there like a, an opportunity for uh, a sustainable uh, peace building mission maybe led by the, by the EU then? I'd say like the only, um, if you can say, <laughs> only uh, problem with that is like a EU operation in Sahel would not benefit to the whole of EU, but to a certain parts of EU, only a few member states, and it's going to be hard to get a full approval at the council for this kind of missions. Again, as we said, even in, even in cases where you all agree, there might be uh, there might be vetoes just because they want to get something else out of it, you know? Yeah, indeed. So, so if, even if the, if the different regions of Europe have you know, different perceptions, <laughs> you're kind of screwed because at that point you won't ever get it through the system. So that's another case for, because the, you know, the project themselves might work, right? The, the, the type of operations might indeed work. And then you kind of end up back on square zero, which is institutional reform. You, you need a European Union that actually works. Yeah. Okay, well, that's our that's our plus one challenge. So, but yeah. I, I, I mean, I think Robin might be onto something here because you don't really need a uh, completely functional uh, European Union when you uh, start looking at um, so like small time solutions to uh, rather than grand narrative solutions uh, the grand narrative solutions being like uh, I want to have trade with China or not but rather looking at like the concrete tangible issues and try have uh, try and distilling actual small time tweaks I think that's something that the EU can definitely start doing slowly and maybe even win influence uh, with sure no, I. I feel like that, that is some kind of like the the, the defining uh, factor, but the uh, appreciation, you know, of the um, of the, the the foreign policy like made in EU. Like uh, as as you said, basically, you know, the um, you talked earlier about the 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 China China policy. Let's come back to that. Um, that was looking um decades uh decades ahead instead of looking only a few quarters ahead and um i feel like the eu country two member states kind of has the opportunity to look a bit more ahead yeah yeah so um let's see we yeah, I, I, I think so. Uh, maybe our brand shouldn't be like, I don't think that democracy uh, overall works really well with the long term planning that China is able to do. Right. That's that's uh, there's a bit of a, a difficulty with that as long as uh, the longest term might be seven years. Right. If you if you look into seven year terms uh, for a function, then looking at decades is just too difficult uh, but maybe a european brand of solutions or um uh, things that we can work on right now are more um like solution oriented like real tangible problem solutions rather than uh looking at uh um, structural ones Right now, eh? That's uh, we we should go a bit more two pronged in this regard, maybe. Sure, I mean we need to do both, right? You and usually where you need to communicate, especially as if you're like Volta, you you just build, you know you're you're campaigning on the idea of rebuilding the system and remaking the system, right? You need to do things like this. You need to first say, well, you know, we in an ideal world we'd like this and we'd like you to do this and we'd like the world to be like this. Blah 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 blah. Yeah. blah. However. Given current circumstances, given how it works today, given how 
you know, you know what I mean, right? Like, yeah. given the state of play, we'd like you to do this. So, for example, with the China policy, we I would love for Europe to, as I said before, um, recognize Taiwan, something bold, right? Um, at the same time, what can we do today? Well, we have a deal that is just within the current framework, still a bad deal. We can refuse the deal. Yeah. We, we, I want us all to, you know, stop with Huawei on the European level and just say, oh, yeah, well, we can't do that. So we need to campaign nationally. Well, that's the beauty of Vault. You know, we can campaign nationally as well as pan-Europeanly. So definitely, yeah. We'll have to say, well, no to Huawei. At the same time, you can go even further. You know, you can say, well, you know, we'd love all these beautiful things, but we can just say something as simple as, you know, no to a single trade deal. Let's stand for human rights on the topic of slave labor. It's it's tangible. It's bold still because the China, you know, the Chinese government will throw a shit fit. But there are it, things where the European Union could do more, and because Europe still does do trade, in principle, can we at least do that together? That's the question. Like that 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 that's the question. Can we at least do that together? Because if we can't. We have way deeper problems as the, than the institutions being wrong. And we have way deeper problems in the fact that the current institutions do not allow us to work together. Then there's such a deep issue of amorality in the European Union that we need just a p new political generation. But interestingly, I think is um, if you look at the just the construction of the European Union. So like the foreign policy is embodied by the um, by the EAS, right? Like you said uh, at the beginning. EIS. But the EIS being a European External Action Service. Yeah. Um, so the, the foreign policy is embodied by that institution. And interestingly, this uh, this body is not at all responsible for any uh, trades or uh, economic decision. Right? Yeah. So isn't that kind of somehow like reveling of, um, of the EU... You train a thought on foreign policy? Well, it's it's the whole thing with uh, with the European government again, right? You have these different bodies that all are supposed to do these very niche things all, to, all on their own. There is no u unifying European government. There is no Euro you know unifying European vision. There are there's a bunch of institutions who kind of operate semi autonomously without any sort of you know they well you know the council told us kinda to do this. Okay, cool. That, that's not vision, that's not coordination, that's not leadership in any way. We have a problem because there is no united European representation of, of a united European people. There's a bunch of different institutions who kind of do their own thing. So it comes down to, again, I know we were supposed to talk about pragmatism, but on, in principle, you know, it comes down to the simple question that how do we create a European government? How do we create a European... How do we create a European Union that's for the people, not bureaucratic, not alliances between states, but one for the for the people who want to be democratically represented. We are currently in an, at an impasse. We're on the one hand, you know, on the one hand, you 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 know, you have a European alliance of different states, which you can stand for. It's a valid opinion. I disagree with it, but it's it's an opinion. At the same time. You can go for a more democratic Europe. But what we cannot do, what any, everybody and anybody should be able to recognize is the fact that we cannot do the middle ground. More Europe, less Europe. We need to decide. This current ho weird thing we have today doesn't work. Because is it that... doesn't work in an alliance and it doesn't work in a doing It works at doing neither. But here's has the to thing, work. right? Because it's a... Uh, I think everyone's already... Uh, I think no nobody uh, would disagree with you here, but it is a bit of a necessity to be there, right? Because we can neither get a European... At this point, we are not able to get a European Federation nor a Confederation, which makes this a circumstantial solution rather than a, um, a wish. But how can we get out of that and pass? Well, you know, how, how we get to European government? How we, yeah. how we get... It's fine. Well, I mean, the, the European Union has an amazing tendency to just shoot itself in the foot. They, the European Union has been hyping up for weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks, and by weeks I mean years, to, to do something called the Conference for the Future of Europe, which was apparently supposed to be the sort of grassroots thing where everybody could have a say, you'd have citizens chiming in, and la-da-da-da-da. -da 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 -da. 
And then they spent three months of, you know, the last three months debating who, which European politician that nobody would had ever heard about would chair the conference. Amazing. I mean, because that's what people care about. They care about what European bureaucrat is supposed to chair the meeting that nobody has heard about. Cool. Yeah. So, you Sounds know, good. the European Union has an ability to, whenever they get the chance of actually interacting with people in a way that matters, they just do, do more harm than they're supposed to do. They just do more harm than they would do good if they did the right thing. It is like constantly net minus. It's embarrassing. It's, so it's really a P- embarrassing. So it's and a I PR problem. No, it's, it's a PR problem born out of a mentality problem. All they right. just don't get it. They just don't get it, right? Mm-hmm. The, European, the European Union of today is built to be this weird middle ground between a union and an alliance, right? Yeah. It's built to be the middle ground. It's created to be the middle ground so nobody would oppose it because it would be you know, close enough to the middle ground that nobody would mind. But right now, people don't agree. Right now, people want some... I, I don't know if polarization is good, but at least vision is good. You know? Yeah. People want to know where to take it. Going somewhere. We are living in too uncertain a time to not have a way forward. Right. Exactly. Well, and to answer David in the chat, my settlers keep getting killed. I produce like three, four, five of them, but they all get killed. Well, you should protect them. Like, yeah, at least like, from some people or lands. Yeah, always protect them, basically. Oh. There you go. Okay. Round. Uh... Also, it is eleven thirty. Um, I am uh, more than eager to uh, continue the stream. At the same time, uh, I do need a break. Are we going to take a break? We can take one. I, I'm totally in favor of proceeding after a break because now it's getting interesting. Yeah. If only, but but yeah. So maybe I'll give a, a brief summary about the current situation here on this planet, this alternative reality with <laughs> eight superpowers and how we can improve the situation of the human players on this map. And then we head into a break. How long should this break take? I would just say uh, 10 minutes, 10, 15 minutes. Yeah, should be sufficient. Maybe maybe ten even. I think for me that's fine. I don't know about you. Fine. Yeah, that should be right. Okay, all right. Mm-hmm. Let's head into the summary. So we have eight nations, eight civilizations. If I'm taking the name of the game here, that are still in the game because even though uh, Egypt had to suffer the loss of Memphis, they were able to rebuild Accra in the same position. Uh, I didn't know words, that. No civilization. Yeah, I, I wonder why you, uh, Rome, aka Mike, did not take that spot when Memphis was destroyed. I mean... Either way, yeah. Egypt is still a thing, in other words, and uh, that's kind of the target of all the human players. That's me in South Africa, we have Mike in Europe, we have Rob in North Asia, and we have Joel in East Asia. And um, the main goal, if I may recommend some, is uh, for China to build protected settlers. That means there's a military unit on the same tile all the time. And you had to remove tile where you can build a city and build it and connect it to your capital. And same for Russia. I think Russia also only has like two or three cities, right? Three cities, yeah. Yeah, okay. So, and Rome has like, what, eight, nine? Ten. Ten, okay. And I have nine cities. So I think the mi- biggest military powers right now, uh, besides the AIs, are Rome and uh, the Zulus. And uh, maybe soon enough we can, in fact, challenge Egypt power in the Middle East. So that would be the next target. And that will be possible with knights, for which we need chivalry, for which we also need uh, iron and horses, but I think both is available in Europe and both is available in Africa, and then we're gonna have some fun with Egypt after our break. Sounds good, thank you so oh, much. Right. Oh, I'm developed because the player of China doesn't know how to play. 
<laughs> just just expand. Build, protect the settlers, and you'll be in the top three soon enough. Something, something. I am trying. Okay. Um, do you, you know what I'll do? I'll uh, I'll send some military over to you uh, uh, to see if we cannot have uh, just yeah protect. He protect. He defend. All right. We'll do. Uh, ten minutes. Good. Sounds good. Uh, if you uh, want to play, we have a uh, have prepared a Kahoot for you uh, during the the break. If you want to join that. All right. Uh, well, my phone is dead, so. Let me. Actually, I'm a mute. I'm a I'm a mute. I'm a shut the video, and I'm a back five to midnight. Yeah. All right. All right. Good. All good? Cool. Good. See you then. See ya.
Jag fick han där. And, uh, let's see. Hello, here we are back again. And unfortunately, I cannot see Joel. And that's a big shame. So, for now, we have Robin. As long as the camera doesn't work. Hi, Robin. Robin is also playing along, of course. And we yeah, are playing I'm... Civ. Um, let's see. Okay, 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 okay. There we are. So we are playing Civilization with Joel, and Joel is playing the Chinese, which is, of course, a bit of a, an ironic statement to make, because Joel uh, has just been making a passionate argument about that Europe should have a more, um, well, not aggressive per se, uh, not right? Joel, but like no, more. I would say, you know, I would say realistic or realistic. Pragmatic. Yeah. A real... I don't want to say realist because in foreign policy that means something else. <laughs> I want to say realist, you know? Because yeah. China isn't a friend. We should work with China. We should absolutely work with China, but we should be aware that China does not consider itself our friend. Yeah. Well, the thing is, like, obviously in foreign policy, you also have to distinguish uh, friend, ally, and um, working partner. Yeah, 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 for Just sure. Just like sure. diplomatic trading partner. I mean... Yeah, and... Yeah, no, please, go, 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 please yeah. continue. No, actually, Robin, take it away. Uh, yeah, so, so as you say, like, obviously, uh, China cannot be um, a friend in a sense, like, we have so many uh, different opinions uh, just in terms of, for example, human rights. Um, but that doesn't mean uh, that all trades uh, should be stopped obviously uh that being said uh the 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 i think that's that's one of the the, the arguments that you mentioned at the beginning at uh, the first part of the um, of the live yeah. the eu is such a, a strong um economic power that we sh have to actually use that at some point like we have to 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 use that to set up some kind of standards and that does not mean not being friends or being friends it's just like literally using our uh, our economic power to to our advantage yeah so we we are of course um part of we are all part of this planet right i'm, I'm not going to go all uh, one world on one people one thing because of course that is the nice end goal but at the same time we do have to keep in mind everyone here is trying to make a living on this world and um making it a more hostile environment for a country is not really in anyone's benefit at this point in time uh, at the same time we should also make sure that other people don't inadvertently whether it's even inadvertently or even uh or, or uh, intentionally um make sure that we don't have that either so a more realistic approach uh but at the same time uh, try and find out a way forward without being friends because ultimately that's what it boils down to right we are we are not allies with china we can try and be but at the same time there's no reason for us to do that well i think that, I, I think it's less that we don't have any reason to be allies with china well we have every reason to be you know friendly with china but yeah. we also have no reason whatsoever to compromise on our morals there it, we go. it's been said it's been said many times that you know, the, the international system is without morals. Yeah. yeah, that just means that we can't force others to adhere to our morals. What it does not mean, however, is that we cannot... We cannot compromise. Yeah, well, well, look, we can still choose to stay true to our own morals ourselves. And yes, that does mean that potentially, if you have a trade with China, where China doesn't even admit the problem of slave labor in China, we don't need to trade with them. Don't we, though? Well, yeah, we do, but we don't need to... <laughs> That's to be honest, I, uh, let's, let's put it like this. We need to trade with China. We need a trade deal with China. They need a trade deal with us because they need to trade with us. Right? Yeah. That means that we can be a little more ballsy in what we demand that trade deal to entail. Exactly. Than just, than just smile and wave when they say that, well, we won't commit to anything with regards to slave labor. Like, th that, there's that's... a point here. There's a point here where you just have to ask yourself, like, is this acceptable? Not political. Uh, 
ethically. It but was like really, special. but there there are some. I have a bit of issue with that because I I've been thinking about that. Yes, of course we should take issue with that, but isn't it also very hypocritical to to take issue with exactly this? Because there are tons of countries we are dealing with as well, which do basically the same thing, right? So the Arabia is one of our biggest allies. We should call that one out too. Um. I mean, you you now you now, <clears throat> you I now argue against hypocrisy. You're not necessarily arguing against work, you know, against the strongest arms on China. Well, I'm I'm saying, why are we singling out China uh, at this moment right now with this? Uh, because it feels like a bit of hypocrisy because we deal with other countries that are doing the same thing. When, when then the question isn't whether or not we should be handling China in a better way, the, the question... Well, actually, let's put it like this. The argument you're making is not to handle China in a worse way than we already are. No, no, no not at all. Is, the argument you're making is not the fact that we should not treat China in a smarter way. The argument you're making is that we should treat other countries in a more honest way. Uh, or be, or be consistent. consistent. No, it, that that that's the thing. Like the the question is like be consistent because the question is not like should we have a China policy, but the question is should we have a EU foreign policy? Yes. To begin with, that is actually consistent in all uh, yeah. in all aspects. Like I was saying, for example, with Saudi Arabia or with with, uh, with any other countries, um, it just happens that China is a very large trade trading partner uh, that does fit a lot of the criteria that we could use to define that uh, that that very um, EU foreign policy. I think at least. Okay, okay, okay. Well, you make a good point there. Like, um, so the, the what, what I very much do not disagree with the fact that we should make a uh, make sure that we don't compromise on our values, but at the same time, um, it feels so fake the moment we uh, say yeah it's about our values because ultimately it's not it's about scare it's about a lot of fear mongering going on in Europe uh, Chinese exceptionalism and basically for tr protecting our own interests there is all uh, crude as it may be uh, it is not about values and uh, we have not taken offense at slavery in other countries uh, before uh, and we're more than happy to dabble in that as well and close a blind eye, and which is actually official policy in many uh, 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 cases, right? Um, no, Dubai. Mike, Mike, end your turn. Oh, I'm so sorry. Yes. Uh, can I? Where? Huh? Yeah. You're sorry. Oh. Sorry for that. Oh. Yeah. Gotcha. I'm done. Well, yeah, I mean, very recently, uh, not uh, not Dubai, but uh, I think it was Saudi Arabia, yeah, right? Yeah, Bahrain, uh, that, that Dubai. You know, on uh, on uh, forced labor for the um, for the World Cup. It was Saudi Arabia, I've right? Denmark. I've been told right now to say hi from Thor in Denmark, who's watching us. Hello, Thor. Thank you for being here. Awesome. Super that you're watching. Uh, Mike, can you please end your tours? Yeah, I'm looking at where I am. Ah, there we are. I am just a uh, little bit. So I am being killed. So that's it's really important for me to look whether I'm not being killed or. There we go. Um, there's just too much going on with ten cities, you know. Oh, sorry. <laughs> okay, there we are. So, um, Mike, your um, catapults that's artillery unit you cannot directly attack with that you yeah. have to bombard another tile with that yeah 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 that was my uh when uh, i have like a a huge uh part of lands in in siberia obviously that is literally empty there's nothing on it <laughs> no resource whatsoever right let's actually see now because now i might yeah, actually get my city just uh, expand to south and yeah. asia well, I'm, I'm, I'm just gonna make one city now where I am. Wait. Great. Okay. Amazing. Guangzhou, Guangzhou, founded. It's well, is is it's to the north, but it's it's another city. I just have another city now, finally. And if you I stand to the north, to, to the north is me. 
If you build a temple in Guangxu, you actually have more culture soon, thus your territory expands, and then you get the horses and the incense for free, basically. Right, you just have to build the streets there. I need to, what do I need to build? Uh, a temple in Guangzhou? Yeah, one of the first things, if you want to get more territory for a city, you just build a temple. Yeah, I'm building a temple, it's 15 tons. Great. Awesome. All right, I am also, what are you uh, uh, researching? I am almost done with monotheism. That's the plan, exactly. I'm doing feudalism done in two turns. What is Russia doing? Uh, Russia is uh, currently on an other thing. Wait, let me check. Uh, do, 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 do. Currently, I am researching... Just check the lower uh, right. Still, uh, I'm still researching literature. Yeah, but on the lower right, I have nothing. I don't understand where you see the... Okay, I have literature. Sure. Just your normal screen no, where you see yeah. the actual yeah, game yeah. happening. You have an info box. I have uh, lit literature. literature oh, let, I have some stuff for you. Here we go. Oh, so do, do I though? I have stuff for you. Oh, I you you you, you research monotheism. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> oh my, you, you have monotheism? Yeah, contact me, please. I wanted to. Or do you want something in return? Oh, I'm sorry. I, th I thought it was a freebie, you know? Give me, I don't know, whatever you want. I will give By the way, I'm going to show an angry expression because I want to, I don't know. I'm ending the turn. The Egyptians built a great library, well, that's unfortunate. They're getting lots of text for free now. Oh. Uh, did you get monotheism in the end or not? I did not get monotheism. I tried right, to accept, then, but um, you didn't. Uh... Okay, okay, okay. Do you have any technology for me? No, I thought I had, but you are uh, you are killing it in a tech. Uh, you are basically a tech entrepreneur. You uh, you should run the European tech thing, like uh, you you Google or something. Me uh, or name in progress. So sorry, sorry, have... people. We have David in the term right now who can uh, definitely argue that I should not run the tech. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so hopeless <laughs> on that side. Man, I have a city that's been wor uh, building a worker for the past like thousand turns for some reason. Just keep in mind that you need more citizens in order to build units that need citizens. So a worker takes away one and settler takes away two from your population and you only have one or two living there you cannot finish the project okay i have just one but then, yeah, how then do you I can get never finish it you get more people by irrigating surrounding plain land if you build something in the tundra then i hope you built it close to the sea and um, irrigate build... something if you build your city close to the sea you have a chance by building an arbor and maybe build a temple I'm too. I'm close to the sea, but I'm close to the river. Uh, then no chance. No, you have to be close to the sea in order to build an armor, arbor, a port. Yeah, but then how do I? How am I supposed to get more workers? Oh, you oh, can't. I, would, I recommend to just abandon the city and uh, <laughs> or build something else with it. But uh, building a city in the tundra that's not. Close to the sea is, it's not. Uh, it's not in the tundra. It's kind of in a in a mountain range. Uh, and there's forest and there's a river. Well, then destroy the uh, forest and if there's a green tile beneath it. But how am I supposed to destroy the forest if I can't even have a worker? Build a worker in your capital. Your <laughs> capital should always be able to produce settlers and workers. Or you'd have. How did you survive without having workers? Yeah, I had workers, but uh, they're busy on other parts of the world. I see. Oh no. Make sure to protect it this time. Yeah. Oh, very funny. It's not like I can't play this game. Um, see? Oh no. I'm trying. I am actually. 
By the way, I am protecting it at uh, this time. Great. Oh, I am uh, close to being broke, so I'm going to cut down on my research funds. It's okay. So oh. you have technology for me, Russia? Nice. I'm giving you <laughs> feudalism. How long are we going for this evening? Might be good to ask. Yeah. Um, that's a good question. How about we just... Oh. Start wrapping it up, maybe? Yeah, slow light wrapping it up sounds like a good plan, doesn't it? Sure. Yeah. Sounds good. All right. I'm going to head off soon. Um, I think massive thanks to the viewers who stayed with us for this long with our rumbling. Uh, really good to have you. <laughs> if you haven't already, please subscribe. Um, if you have subscribed, massive up for you. Yes, thank you so much, uh, Joel, for You're... this uh, plugging. Oh, dude. Happy to. Let's do this again. I'm happy to be on here again. Yeah, yeah. lovely to be here. Uh, for the for the viewers uh, watching, if you are uh, interested, uh, in the next uh, few weeks, uh, we should be talking about uh, women empowerment and women politics. And nothing concrete yet, but I've heard uh, I've heard uh, basically background noise about uh, debating the. EU space policy. Ooh, exciting! That does sound exciting. Look, guys, um, I'm, I, I think I think I am actually going to start heading off. But we have many more things to do. Let's come up with something, and uh, let's join up again, shall we? That sounds like an okay. amazing plan. Thank you so much, Joe, for being here. Um, so and uh, next time we'll be playing something that I actually know how to play. Yes, we'll be we'll be playing Age of Empires or uh, well maybe Heroes. I I do like that premise actually, and I think that everyone else uh, here might love that as well. It's oh, action no, it's packed. Awesome. Yes, let's play either Heroes oh, or, or uh, Age of Empires. Uh, perfect. Great touch base on the Civ uh, franchise was ages ago since I played it. Um, feels really nostalgic. With that said, much love from Sweden, and I am tuning out. <laughs> Thank you so much, guys. Thank you for Thank being you here all. and speak to you later. Uh, thanks, thanks, and much love to all of you. Thank you very much, Joel. Thank you for joining. Thank you. Um, Mike, if you yes. want to present a nice history of the vault instead of uh, basically quitting the game, you can, let me check how that's called, uh, upper left main menu and then retire. Ooh. That sounds amazing. I saved Let's the game, how we so don't worry about that. Perfect. Okay, I'm going to retire then. Yes, end this nightmare. Amazing. You have suffered a right. humiliate. They really do not want you to quit. I have. We are disgraced, and I have suffered a humiliating loss. That's uh, wow. Um, quickly Very... jump through the first screen by hitting the cross. Yeah. And then the uh, other screens are more interesting. Oh God! I'm oh, and I have crashed. Well, ladies oh, and no. gentlemen, that sounds like a terrific way to end this stream. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go to the interview solo, so you won't have to see the white screen of death. Um. So today we had Joel Boma, the uh, member of the European Board um talking about foreign policy with us while we were playing civilization 3 together uh it was really amazing thank you so much for being here uh also uh david and robin uh it's really cool to have you here you've been here the whole time and uh the stream would be nothing without you so thank you so much uh was a pleasure Yes, perfect. All right, and with this, let's call it a night. And speak to you all later. Oh, and let's, let's call it a night. I think it's it's very really, uh, lucky that uh, your game has crashed because otherwise I would have crashed you. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> it was it was definitely very very nice to, yes. be, to be here tonight. It was a nice uh, debate, and always it's cool to play together. 
Awesome. Thank you so much and have a good night, everyone. And we'll see each other later. Goodbye. Indeed.